well, a very, a very rousing rendition of when the Spurs come marching in with the lone trumpeteer here in North London. We just, let's just let you enjoy this for a second. moment every time you hear it isn't it and, and just before I hand to you guys a final word I mean Bradley where will the key battles be won today what have Spurs got to do to nullify this Aston Villa attack to stop the lovely Ollie Watkins to stop Aston Villa from from running rampant here I suppose they've got to defend and defend very well because Aston Villa going forward have a real threat they have players playing some excellent football and when Spurs went to nine men they were truly tested here last time out against Chelsea of course and conceded numerous goals. I expect more this afternoon. Not sure which way this one's going to go, but I think we're going to be in for an intriguing encounter. And the international break came at a good time for Spurs in terms of wiping the slate of those two disappointing defeats and regrouping over this last couple of weeks, do you we think? Possibly, Lucy, but obviously key players, big players, Van der Ven and Madison, not back to late January, we're led to believe. Romero still out, not available till next week. Basuma suspended as well. That's the spine of the team. They're four of Spurs' best players. So without them against this in-form Aston Villa side, tough test for Spurs today. Yeah, right. Well, without further ado, let me hand you over to our commentary team. We're just a couple of minutes from kickoff. Bradley Allen is alongside Phil Parry. Lucy, thank you very much indeed. The two sets of players have just uh, shaken hands on the halfway line. Uh, Emi Martinez uh, now exchanging pleasantries with the officials, led today by Robert Jones. Spurs fans won't like to see him. Uh, he was, of course, in charge of the North London derby not that long ago when a penalty was eventually awarded uh, for a, or should we say, a handball, and it was initially not awarded, then he awarded it Bradley, leading Jermaine Genus to make comments on social media, which forced him to then apologise after a referee's charity suggested that his use of language was inappropriate, and they were probably a bit right. Um, but that's in the past, and the Merseyside referee takes charge of this game between Aston Villa, who was looking to go three up without defeat against Spurs in three successive games for the first time in a long time. Um, only once in the Premier League history have they done it, and that was back in the 90s. Spurs, a much-changed side this afternoon. Some eyebrows raised as well with the selection policy of Ange Postacoglu, who was stood on the edge of his coaching box for that uh, rendition of when the Spurs go marching in with a lone trumpeter, aided and abetted by tens of thousands of voices in the Spurs choir. Uh, Vicario between the sticks, Pedro Porro, Emerson Royale, Ben Davis and Destiny Adogi. The back four, Rodrigo Bentancourt making his first Spurs start since the 11th of February when he scored against Leicester City and Giovanni Lo Celso Hill, Kulisevsky and Johnson supporting Son. The players now ring the set of circles. Paul Coit, as everyone knows here, will just tell us about why there is going to be a minute's applause. Earlier today, we found out about the sad passing of Terry Venables at the age of 80 after a long in, uh, illness. From a Chelsea, Spurs, Queen's Park Rangers, uh, Crystal Palace man and manager of many more besides including England and Barcelona will be fondly remembered around the world of football, especially here at what is the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on the site of where he managed and played the old White Hart Lane. A minute's applause from the fans inside the, cir uh, um, inside the centre circle, the players and stuff.
often used this legend, but I think it's true to say that Terry Venables is an absolute London football legend. And, of course, one link with the current Spurs manager, not just the, the link with being in the coaching boxes, but he was a predecessor to Ange Postacoglu in charge of Australia for a little while as well, amongst the, a litany of uh, work that he had to his name. Not bad with a microphone in his hand, Bradley Allen, a bit like yourself, great on the pitch, great in the coaching box, great with the microphone, Bradders. Uh, this afternoon, Spurs, it's an interesting lineup that uh, has been selected against an Aston Villa side who've made just one change with Tillemans dropping out of the starting lineup. Uh, and a little tweak with Matty Cash being a real explosive talent down the right hand side of, yeah. the, of midfield. We think Aston Villa 4 4 2, but a pretty brave and bold approach for Spurs in their starting lineup when you think Johnson, Kuliseski, Son, Gill, and Lo Celso are all in the starting 11 here. Bentacore just returning from a long, long term injury. Um, really think the Spurs defence is going to uh, be tested here today. I think we'll get goals. This is going to be a great watch. Referee Robert Jones checks with his two assistants, Tim Wood and Wade Smith, and blasts the whistle, and here we go. Aston Villa in the claret and blue, claret shorts and claret socks with Martinez between the sticks, Conza, Carlos and Pau Torres alongside Luca Dean in defence, Matty Cash, Pubacar Kamara, Douglas Luiz and John McGinn, Moussa Diaby and Oli Watkins, plenty of um, Arsenal links and on more so than, of course, Unai Emery, the manager of Aston Villa who break forward now with Ollie Watkins down the left hand side just shuffles it back to the Scottish international John McGinn gets round the left hand side he's managed to wriggle inside the penalty area cuts it towards Cash skims off his head it's going to be run away by Tottenham Hotspur and here comes Destiny Adogi who uh, served that one match suspension after being sent off against Chelsea for the last outing for Tottenham Hotspur in that defeat to Wolverhampton Wanderers, and then La Celso in midfield, closed down, picked up by Kamara. Here come Villa again, sprayed out wide towards Cash. Little intervention though, just takes it away over to this near touchline. And man, who's actually won a European trophy? Uh, four of them being won by Uno uh, Emery, the uh, Europa League. But Brian Hill, of course, winning it last year uh, yes. or last season. Uh, Bradley Allen alongside uh, one or two other, well, certainly one in particular, former Spurs luminary if we can um, describe him as that. Here is Ben Davis, the Welsh international. They know who they've got to face now in the playoffs. There's a long ball forward is met by Martinez. Good starting position. Hacks it away from the advancing Kunmin Son. As Oli Watkins not flagged offside, but it wriggles all the way back to Quilamo Vicario and Spurs with a little bit of hazy rain, misly rain, drifting down inside the stadium, get it forward again. WSL action as well this afternoon that we're keeping tabs on on BBC Radio London, as well as the FA Cup, which gets going. Billericay against Dulwich Hamlet in the uh, the second round. Uh, but here it's 0-0 at Tottenham Hotspur, but we have had a goal in the WSL. Chelsea against Leicester, early goal for Ahmed Nur. Yes, indeed, for within a minute, Chelsea have taken the lead here. It was a bit of Leicester helping them to get that goal. A pass back favoured Lauren James, who simply didn't have much more trouble than to tap it past Leipzig, and it leads to them leading by a goal till after three minutes. Bradley Allen. Wow. Spurs with the first real chance of the game, and it's hacked over the top of the bar by Johnson. Well, by Odogi, should we, I say. We, with two sending offs here last time out, Spurs, second half against Chelsea, they had an incredible high line with the remaining players on the pitch. Aston Villa have started exactly the same field with a really high line. Spurs have played two ball in behind. That was the second one. A dogie run from deep, onside, half volley. Kulisewski broken in the area. Kulisewski off the post. Chance at a far post and up in the air it goes. Now battling for it is Brennan Johnson. And it's Gill who goes to ground inside the six-yard box. And Spurs have started brightly with two chances in 30 seconds. A dogie scuffing one over the bar. And Kulisewski forcing a... Well, a huge sigh of relief from the Aston Villa contingent because only the woodwork came to their rescue. Nil, yeah, nil. he did everything but score. Kulisewski, interception from Spurs. He got the give-and-go off Son and then he struck the inside of the post. Now Villa at the other end, working down their left-hand side. Look at Dean with a cross, block to McGinn. McGinn's now going to try and race towards the byline. He's got the former Everton man in support. Sprays it back into Douglas Luiz in midfield. Robert Jones says that's a foul by Dejan Kulisewski. Never a foul. Douglas Poor Luiz decision, that is. Goes to ground. Just toppled over. Spurs were away there on the counter-attack. Inside their half on the right flank. Free kick for Villa, though. 
It's halfway inside the Spurs half. Uh, we're seeing the Aston Villa set piece coach come to the fore now. Uh, Austin McPhee, or Tom Petty, as some people like to call him, or uh, those of a certain uh, certain generation may even remember further back, Rick Wakeman. Big Brentford fan, Rick Wakeman, born in Parry Vale, Bradley. He's got a look at him as well as Austin McPhee, but he's a set-piece coach, he's very distinctive, and he's barked out some instructions. So what will they do? Four and a half minutes played, Aston Villa drifted in towards the back post. It's a header! And it's just wide! Oh, flying wide from the contact from Pau Torres. He puts his head in his hands. He knows that was a really good opportunity. Well, less than five minutes into this game, we could have had four goals, Phil Parry. What a chance, great ball. Curled and wound round the back of the uh, the Spurs defence from Dina's free kick. Vicario sort of hesitated and Torres, uh, Torres come in, headed it back across goal and it was I was right behind it, it was less than a foot just wide of that left post. Spurs pressing at the other end. Crazy start to this game, Phil. Martinez pokes it towards Diego Carlos. Down the right-hand side now Esri Konza carries. He's got cash wide of him, Polish international. He's going to curl in across towards Oli Watkins. Headed away, though, by Adogi, who had one of those chances early in this game. And now it's Brian Heel on the left-hand side, forward towards Adogi again. He's run it over the whitewash under pressure from Cash. And we're going to go to Arsenal against West Ham United in the WSL. Goal, early doors for Emily Herbert. Arsenal take an early lead as Arsenal won West Ham nil. An absolute screamer from Manham outside the penalty box on the right side. A rocket into the top corner. Arsenal won West Ham nil. Here comes Spurs again. Martinez is way out of his uh, goal line. And there was a few oohs and ahs as Aston Villa played dangerously in front of that back line, but cleared away by Pau Torres. But it's Spurs who have it. And Lo Celso. <laughs> <laughs> Two teams are going to give the opposition space. I am going to make a bold prediction five and a half minutes in, Bradley. Forgive me if I get this wrong. This ain't going to finish nil-nil. I think you're right, Phil Parry. It's also not going to finish... Frantic start to this game, isn't it? Goal mouth action, chances for both sides in these early stages. Not going to finish nil-nil at Kings Meadow either. Chelsea against Leicester City, WSL, I'm a, no, another goal. Already for Chelsea Brian now. And this was an own goal for Leicester. Lovely work from Kirby and, and Kerr to set it up, playing the three ball towards James. Despite her shot being saved by Leipzig, it was powering into her own net, and that's put Chelsea 2 0 up after seven. Aston Villa breaking towards the halfway line, but a strong challenge from Ben Davis gets it back. Hill again down that left hand flank for Tottenham Hotspur, all in white, of course, this season. Now in centre midfield, it'll be spun away by Brennan Johnson, picked up by Rodrigo Bentoncourt. And Spurs just slowing it down ever so slightly. Here's Benton Kerr again. As I said, first start since February for Spurs. Started, of course, uh, for his country away on international duty, but that was his first start. He'd come off the bench in the previous game. As a little back heel sends Heel inside the penalty area. Palmed away by Martinez. Head of goalwards over the top of the bar. Well, Bradley Allen, this has been an explosive start to this game. And a Pedro Porro header which goes over the top. Yeah, lovely combination. Flick, left corner of the box from Kuliseski, and he broke onto the uh, the layoff Gill. The shot, though, was at a good height, wasn't it, for yeah. the goalkeeper Martinez? I think he should have hit it hard and low across the uh, the target. Going back to that uh, earlier incident, we've just seen an arm, a hand there. Konza, I, I been don't harsh. Think he, he didn't know much about it. I don't it. think that's a penalty. No. Whether that was checked from VAR, we're not sure. Seven and a half minutes played, lively. We've had uh, efforts and chances at both ends already in this game. And again, it goes forward, cut out at the back, though, by Luca Dean here at Aston Villa, trying to play it through the thirds. Cash has made the break, he has to stay onside. It just drifts away from Moussa Diaby, though, as he tried to spin on the ball uh, halfway inside the Spurs half, the 24-year-old Parisian. And it will be Spurs in the shape of Rodrigo Bentoncourt. And all these changes that are being made, but Spurs fans will be delighted to see Bentoncourt back in that midfield yeah. holding He's a class role. act, elegant footballer, really composed in possession, great use of his left and right foot. And he could become a key player, I think, uh, and a real sort of heartbeat of that midfield for Spurs under this new manager. Watkins puts Emerson Royale under a bit of pressure. Here's Ben Davis wearing the captain's armband. Again, he drifts it long, looking for Brian Heel down the left-hand side. Is that a foul on Esri Konza? Well, the referee says yes. The new and born 26-year-old Konza into the England lineup 
and squad last time out again speaking very positively about his experience and how he was brought up and the importance that his brother played in his life played at Senrab of course started at Charlton spell at Brentford before moving to uh, Aston Villa over 150 starts now for the villains of the West Midlands as it goes back into Pau Torres Luca Dina is popping up on the left hand side instead he goes long to Cash who touches it back to Konza who strays it towards Diaby on the half turn on the halfway line manages to muscle away this time with good skill from Ben Davis he's got Cash wide of him who drifts in field now does Cash and Aston Villa have taken it halfway inside the Spurs half grey clouds Bradley and it was a rather sort of Temperate build up to this game, but it's actually started, you know, just atmosphere wise, but it really has started with fantastic, fantastic pace. Yeah, great tempo, really has warmed up. Crowd were a bit quiet, weren't they? Probably an hour or so yeah. before kickoff, before we got in, but it's filled up and it's uh, a terrific spectacle so far. Let's go to Dave Victor's watching Billericke against Dulwich Hamlet in the Women's FA Cup second round. And I'm right in the middle of the Pepper Army here. It's been a a subdued start to this one. It was a late start as well. We've only played seven minutes and many of those have been uh, dealt with an injury to Bitterick's Leanne Bell. Just one shot of note, Phoebe Reed with an effort from a good position, but it was wide of the target for Hamlet's women. It, it, it is still Bitterick's nil, Dulwich Hamlet nil. Dave, thanks very much indeed. 2-0 to Chelsea against Leicester in the WSL. Arsenal leading West Ham United by a goal to nil. Manchester United 2-0 up at Bristol City. Liverpool, Brighton, goalless at this moment in time. Keel down the left-hand side. Hugo Amory's sort of sidestepping up and down the line uh, in agitation at the moment with his shiny shoes. He could slip over, Brad. I'm not sure there's much grip on them. He's going to have to be careful. Doesn't want to embarrass himself in North London. The former Arsenal manager, of course, who didn't lose to, uh, to Spurs in the league, did lose a League Cup game in his spell in charge of the Gunners. Um, and of course has inspired Aston Villa, who, if they were to win today, would um, set a club record for wins in a calendar year. 21 they've equaled in this 2023, equal with 1980. Yeah, of that course, 80-81 the year they win the title, won the title. Impressive job that he's done. I, you know, in, in, in some people's eyes, Benton core forward again. Adogi's broken in off the left hand side. It's a foul. He fouls Esri Konza. Sorry, Bradley. Yeah. Um, a pretty good job at Arsenal. And perhaps un unfairly. Uh, well, was following sacked. the man is always going to be tough, isn't it? Very much so. And maybe just a degree of more patience. But uh, going back to Spain and now a return to the Premier League, he's, he's just sort of reconfirmed, really, what a top coach he is one of the best in the world and he's clearly had a key influence on the improvements on this Aston Villa squad and uh, and team big club Aston Villa Spurs of course uh, it's been lost by John McGinn no foul so says Robert Jones so here comes Spurs breaking into the penalty area doubled forward towards Brennan Johnson gets away from one tackle back heeled away though Nesri Konza gets it further clear as the initial contact made by Diego Carlos and then Spurs win it strongly. Benton Core hit forward comes Cash. He's challenging with a dogey who brings it away. Tottenham Hotspur in possession again. Pedro Porro filters it towards the right hand side. Brennan Johnson's got Son in. Son's put it over the bar. Now the flag I think may have gone up anyway, but Son Shin Min goal gaping eight yards out. I think it would have been disallowed, Phil. Even if it's a side today, you want to get it on target. What, what was interesting there was the, the nudge in the back by Benton Cor on McGinn. I actually thought that that one was a foul. Yeah. He's, he's blown up the ref for a couple That's of 50 50 challenges, but they swept down that right hand side. And this is 10 minutes of football. If you're a Spurs fan and you think to yourself, can we play any better than this? Yeah. They've created with this ridiculous high line that Villa have got defensively, numerous chances, some gilt-edged chances, and not just one. Spurs could have been three up, Phil, already. Yeah. Uh, Brennan Johnson, I think, was offside, and the ball back to Son was behind him. It was difficult. He had to try and scoop it out. Wouldn't have counted anyway. Here's Benton Core, midfield, halfway inside the Villa half, threaded forward towards Kulusevski. Villa have come away with it, and then uh, that's a foul. Uh, Pau Torres spilling over Robert Jones um, who came into the Football League only in about 2016 and uh, now a Premier League uh, referee having officiated and learnt his trade or not learnt his trade 
but sort of made his way up through the ranks of National League and, and the WSL as well. Blows the whistle, free kick given. The Aston Villa defender is fine. Goes all the way back to Martinez. So the last Arsenal goalkeeper had to move on when they had a uh, bit of a battle as to who was going to be the uh, number one. Went to Aston Villa, he's done all right. Golden gloves at the World Cup. He's fared all right, Bradley. Aaron Ramsdale need not fear. Kept a clean sheet yesterday against Brentford as it's filtered up the touchline by Villa, but the press on by Spurs is one back possession. Benton Corr has it in midfield again. The crowd encouraging him forward. Straddles over one tackle. Gets it again. Pokes it forward towards Kuliseski. Blocked by Martinez. And again, the flag's gone up late on. The shot blocked by the Villa goalkeeper. It wouldn't have counted. You wouldn't have thought Dejan Kuliseski just beyond that Aston Villa line. Well, say. You said, Phil, the pressure that Spurs are exerting on the Aston Villa players without the ball, he's regaining it quickly, but then the speed and the precision that they're playing through. But they're just going a fraction early, aren't they? They're yeah. going so quick on these sort of up, back and through sequences to break this defensive line. And just a couple of the runners are going, you know, half a yard too early. And that's why the uh, the linesman who's sharp out on that right side has flagged once again. But uh, exciting football for Spurs. It's been a bright start from them. It's uh, Martinez taking his time with this. No clean sheets in the last seven for Aston Villa. They've conceded eight goals in that time as well. Um, and on the road, it's not been so positive. At home, they've been imperious. They've been dispossessed again. Here goes Son. Plays it behind him to Hill. And that's a poor ball from Brian Hill. And Aston Villa have cleared it. Slowly getting to his feet is Bubakar Kamara. He thought he was impeded. He yeah. hobbles away from that challenge, throwing to Tottenham. It was on like a side, side tackle, wasn't it? Mm. Across the uh, the right instep there of Kamara. And Spurs went again, left corner of the box, which is the final ball from Gill. Let them down, foul Ooh. throw. Disappointed. Yeah, a dogie penalised, pinged by the referee for that foul throw. Uh, you don't see that often, Bradley, although you see foul throws, I think, more often than you see them awarded. Bradders, is that a fair point? Yeah. <laughs> it's a pass, Phil. I tell my young players that. <laughs> so Villa get it back rather needlessly, but Spurs are already pressing in. As it goes back from Carlos to Martinez, Pau Torres has to scoop it out wide, and Spurs pressing in hard to make it really difficult and make it awkward for Aston Villa to get clear. The throw-in's taken successful this time. Almost on the halfway line, it's Emerson Royale. Ben Davis is on the left-hand side of the cir uh, centre circle. Davis looks up, sprays it towards the left. Brian Hill, quick first-time ball to a doge inside that penalty area. Plays it behind him. Villa having to track back in order to try and win the ball. Nice little step over and slip from Lo Celso. Pokes it to Brian Hill again on the left-hand side. Villa have won it back temporarily. Matty Cash is back there and he's going to try and run it clear and he thrashes it towards the halfway line. Diaby infield, he got balked, did he? That's what he claims. Spurs have picked up possession and I am who tells his team to just get on with it as Lo Celso now has it. Giovanni Lo Celso, only his second start of the season for Tottenham Hotspur. And he finds inside the centre circle Emerson Royale and everyone bar Vicario as it's chipped over the top to Johnson. Son won't get there, he tried to filter it into the South Koreans' path. Blocked away this time by Diego Carlos and now McGinn will race towards the halfway line and Aston Villa with the ball being turned over. This is non-stop Bradley, it's hardly going out of play, it's hardly stopping. Here's Cash on the right-hand side, he's got Diaby ahead of him. Diaby now spins away from the attentions of Brian Hill. Lots of energy in this game from both sides. Well, it's, it's been a brilliant start, and I think if we truly wanted to see what Ange Ball was all about, this is it, Phil. Yeah. But the only thing is, if Emery, and he, he wouldn't do it, if he was a boxing coach, he'd throw the towel in a little bit here, but Spurs are not on the score sheet. They're not on the scoreboard for their brilliant play and the chances that they've had. Villa on the attack now. Douglas Ruiz on the right-hand side. His cross is a poor one, easily mopped away by Ben Davis. Slipped towards Hill outside of the Tottenham pot, uh, penalty area. He's got a doggy behind him. He finds Brian Hill again, who comes scuttling in field from the left-hand side. And Davis sweeps it back to his goalkeeper. And Vicario turns it towards the right and Emerson Royale. And Porro. And it's carried through midfield by Tottenham. And again, they're looking to unleash Son down the left-hand side. Here goes the South Korean. Leading scorer this season for Tottenham Hotspur in the Villa penalty area. Onto his right foot, tried the shot, took a deflection. Douglas Weiss picks up possession for Aston Villa. It's, uh, it's um, what, 
Second, well, joint second highest scorer so far this season for Aston Villa, Douglas Luiz. Tends to take penalties as it's whipped towards this near touchline. And Esri Conza Villa on the right hand side, 19 minutes gone, halfway inside their own half of the pitch. I think they'd be relieved, Aston Villa. That, you know, they got through this little spell and it's it's nil nil and they're, they're, they're still in the game. And you know that they can improve, Phil. They won't be yeah. in the position in the league table that they've been in. Maybe one or two suffering a bit of a hangover, international duty and whatnot. Yeah. A bit sluggish. And Spurs just haven't quite capitalised just yet. Well, let's but, go to... Uh, promising sorry, start. Sorry, Bradley. Let's go to the London derby in the WSL this afternoon. Arsenal at home to West Ham United. Emily Herbert. It's best me. She opens her account for the season. Arsenal 2, West Ham 0. Another rocket, almost the same as the previous man and goal. Right-hand side, dancing around the defence. Another rocket into the top corner. Arsenal 2, West Ham 0. Uh, here is Ben Davis on the halfway line, uh, rolling it towards this left-hand touchline, and Benson Kaur for Tottenham Hotspur. Almost 20 minutes played, Villa have won it back, uh, and then as they try and play it forward quickly through Cash, on the stumble, falling backwards, they've given possession back to Spurs, and here's Brian Hill looking for Son, couldn't quite get his head on it, guided behind by Luca Dina for a corner kick. And unbelievably, Bradley, this is the first corner of the first half, 20 minutes played, nil-nil. Yeah. Initially, the ball was given away on the half-time, uh, halfway line, sorry, by Bentecourt. A rare mistake from him, but they won it back quickly through the cell. So Gill was fed down the left-hand side, flying away, curling cross away from Martinez, inches away from Son, coming in to that six-yard box. I hate to say it, Son's a brilliant player. If Harry Kane's in there, that's 1-0. Um, but he's not here anymore, is he? Uh, so Spurs are working chances without him. Can they convert maybe from this one, a set piece over on the right-hand side. A uh, little bit of hugging going on inside the six-yard box as well, which the referee will no doubt keep close atten attention to. Spurs have gone short, it's taken short. Son pokes it back out wide towards that far touchline. Hill has it, sweeps it back down that right-hand side. It's going to be whipped in near post, Cash with the header away. Aston Villa haven't quite cleared the danger, only into midfield where Adogi picks up. He's got the Celso to his left, just in front of the centre circle, looking for runners, looking for options. In fact, he goes for the safer option in the shape of Ben Davis, who approaches the edge of the Villa penalty area, curls it towards the far post, and again, cushioned away for another corner kick. I think what's rather surprising here with this this line, this defensive line, I keep mentioning it, how high Villa are. In front of them, there's no pressure on the, by the midfield no. players on the Spurs players, so they just sort of teasing, picking passes, whether that's behind the defence or through the gaps, and it's putting the, uh, the Aston Villa defenders and goalkeeper you know, into a, a real pickle, really, inside their own 18-yard box. Ben Davis tries to get a flick, it throws to... La Salsa! Tottenham Hotspur take the lead. They have taken inflection. Giovanni Lo Celso does not care. The South Stand do not care. The Tottenham Hotspur Stadium do not care because they're celebrating taking the lead against Aston Villa. It spurs one, Villanelle. Deserved lead. He missed the near post header, Ben Davis, but it come into the box. That's why you get players to ring that area. I think it struck... Carlos on its way through, slight deflection, flew beyond Martinez to put Spurs deservedly in front in this Premier League game. 1-0. Well, what a hit and what a start we've had to this game. And Giovanni Lo Celso, one of those players, brought into the starting lineup, And maybe there were some questions about it, Bradley. People looking at it going, right, interesting selection from uh, Ange Postacoglu. He's sitting there probably thinking, yeah, well, I've got it right, mate. Uh, Lucy, you spotted a really interesting stat a second or so ago before that goal. Yeah, I mean, talk about frantic. In the opening 10 minutes of this game alone, the XG was 1.42, which is higher than seven full Premier League games this season, including Arsenal Man City. So. Unbelievable. So, Spurs leading 1-0 at home to Aston Villa, having suffered back-to-back -back defeats in the last two games. Villa now trying to react. Luca Dean down the left-hand side. Watkins is inside that penalty area. It's only Watkins! It's 1-1! The flag stays down and almost immediately Villa have equalised. Their fans are celebrating. Luca Dean with a cross and their leading scorer, Oli Watkins, with a dozen for the season. It's Spurs 1, Villa 1. Well, there is the danger. They've 
Perhaps been starved of service and certainly key man Ollie Watkins. This is going to be checked. Oh, what he was, might be offside. What was nice, Phil, actually, Lille Celso go. We never had a VAR check. We've had so many in the Premier League across this season. But this one may well be offside. He's right foot centrally. It's a terrific cross from Lucas Dean as he overlapped. Curled it in around the back of the Spurs defence. It depends which angle you're looking, which side you're looking from. Right shoulder, well, Phil, maybe. From, from one side, he looks offside. From another side, he looks pretty close, Bradley Allen. Yeah. So the referee, Robert Jones, is now in consultation with Stockley Park. Strikers union and all that. Oh, yeah. I'd allow the goal, Benefit but... of the doubt, I suppose, but if you're Spurs, you don't want it allowed. Geometry lesson now. We don't see the lines, do we, as often as we used to? Well, because so. they can't draw them. They haven't got well, a ruler, have they? They don't know what they do. 25 minutes played. What a game, Bradley. What a game we've had. We, we, after last time out, Phil, and being here for Chelsea, we were, we were hoping for something a little bit... <laughs> Armour and more yeah. serene, but far, far from it. No, absolutely. It's, it's just been uh, full on, hasn't it? Well, well, I, I think, I think, I think that's just. He might just be on. Just offside, I think. <sighs> yeah, that. I mean, the thing is, we've been seeing shown an angle now, which is not fair because he's not square on. So without, no. you know, without actually some sort of spirit level, you can't actually work that out. Where, where's the bricklayer when you need him? Or her? That's that's what I want to know, Bradley. It's crazy. Maybe we don't need... Uh... I quite like the, the visual. Do you remember at the at the World Cup? Yeah. For far decisions. That was that was yeah. pretty good. Pretty good. Because, like you say, it was actually, you know, from the side of the pitch and the correct angle that yeah, he was looking exactly. across uh, the, the, the pitch from. But we don't... Well, we don't get to see that, This do becomes we? a technical decision, doesn't it, really? And, rather than and the crowd as well. Look, the crowd in... You no know, we're privy to the on. pictures, aren't we? We're fortunate yeah. in that regard. Uh, we'll wait for this decision before we head off to Chelsea women against Leicester City women. Robert Jones stood their hands on hips at this moment in time, almost as if he's practising to play Peter Pan in the upcoming Panto Offside. season. Offside. Uh, offside seems to be the decision. So the goal will not count, and Spurs will still lead by a goal to nil. We'll wait for the referee to actually confirm that. This is taking an age. Uh, Robert Jones just getting confirmation and Villa know they haven't scored. The Spurs fans know they haven't scored. It's a free kick for the offside and we'll go to Chelsea against Leicester in the WSL. I'm Ed Nutt. Yeah, 27 minutes gone, but Leicester City have pulled one back now and it's 2-1. Pettenham brilliantly getting around Jess Carter, got forward for her side, found Rantala in the penalty area, she did expertly finished it at the near post. It's brought Leicester right back into this, 2-1 now. Well, that's a relief. Uh, oh, that's dear. a foul by Cash, who's going to get booked, going flying in on Rodrigo Bentoncourt who has gone down in a crumpled heap and needs some attention, so... And he seems to be in a, a bit of discomfort as well, a challenge, Bradley. that, Phil, from Cash. Oof! It's over the ball there. Yeah, but it's... it's Chop, chopped across him, look. Oof! I think it's shin on shin, isn't it? And Rodrigo Bentoncourt is feeling the full effects of that because there's not a lot of protection on the bone there, and the referee calls on the physio. So let's go to Arsenal against West Ham United in the WSL. Emily Herbert. Not much to report here, it's still Arsenal 2, West Ham 0. Uh, the possession's more towards uh, Arsenal. Arsenal are very looking much more dominant here. It's Arsenal 2, West Ham 0. Well, first start since February for Rodrigo Bentoncourt, and 27 and a half minutes in, and he's receiving some treatment, Bradley, uh, which for a Spurs side that has had so many uh, fitness problems of late, it's the last thing they want to see. Um, the players missing in suspension as well, of course. You know that uh, Romero and Pesuma are missing through suspension. He's up to his feet. Just would have felt sharp on the leg there, I think. He's furious, Bentacor, with Matty Cash. Look, he's pointing. He's going to apologise, but I don't know if that'll do or not. He's seen the red miss, Phil, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, it's a free kick which has been awarded. And we'll go to Dave Victor, who's watching uh, Billericay against Dulwich Hamlet in the Women's FA Cup second round. Uh, we'll be there shortly. Um, he's just too, too involved with the Pepper Army, I think, at the moment. Um, 
maybe they're asking whether he smuggled a little drum in or something. Of course, uh, musical connections uh, with Dave's uh, son in the band Genga. As here's Ben Davis out wide to the left hand side and Brian Hill. Ben Davis has it again. Spurs are leading by a goal to nil. Just to clarify that, the Aston Villa equaliser they thought they'd scored through. Ollie Watkins chalked off for being very, very, very closely offside, but just offside. And that was it took a while for VAR. The other night when we were here for that Chelsea game, we um, we had quite lengthy added time, didn't we, Bradley? So that's gonna that's gonna add to this second, uh, this first half on BBC Radio London. 16 minutes to go as this is thighed down by Diego Carlos who deflected Lo Celso's shot into the back of the net for Spurs' opener. And Dave Victor is back at uh, Billericay against Dulwich Hamlet in the FA Cup. Dave? He's still goalless, but only because the woodwork came to the home side's rescue. It was really priced in the 22nd minute with a strike which smashed against the Billericay post. And then Price, three minutes later, with a long-range effort. This time it was a comfortable save for the town goalkeeper, Hope Smith. Certainly it's been Dulwich Hamlet, they've created most of the early chances, but it remains Billericay nil, Dulwich Hamlet nil. Uh, it's Benton Cool's gone down again, Bradley, unable to continue, I think. He might have to be subbed here, which yeah, is a real shame. A massive blow, isn't it? A real concern. McGinn's trying to push a few of the Spurs players because they're, uh, you know, directing a few opinions at Matty Cash down on the halfway line. Well, I'm just... Uh... Hoiberg, I think, he's going to come on. It looks like he's going to have to. So we're seeing it again, the uh, the tackle. Oh, Phil. Yeah. He chopped him down. I think it was um, the reason why it's not wasn't more than a yellow, probably because it was sort of leg on leg. It wasn't boot or stud or something. It was a yeah. It was a it was a trip, but it was quite a a lash of a trip, wasn't it, from Matty Cash? That's probably the uh, the referee's assessment. Giovanni Lo Celso with the only goal of the game so far. And uh, it's been a while since he scored for Tottenham Hotspur. He'll get it because I think it was goal bound. Um, but he's not scored for Spurs since the 30th of September 2021 against NS Moura in the Europa Conference League. Bradley, of course, scored for Villarreal uh, away with Villarreal. But um, that is some goal. And Benton Corey is up and hobbling off. And. Yeah, Emil Koiberg is on to replace him. So his return to the starting lineup for Tottenham Hotspurs lasted 31 minutes. And they will hope, Bradley, that this is not too serious because that will be a real blow. Missed most of this year since the early February game against Leicester with injury. Rodrigo Benson Koi gets a big bear hug from his manager, Ange Postacoglu, and on comes. The Danish international Pierre Emil Hoiberg. 1 0 Spurs, 32 minutes played. Yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping that that's no more than a, a kick, a bruise yeah. on that side part of the lower leg. Spurs with Hill on the halfway line, goes back to Ben Davis. He's going to swat it all the way back to his goalkeeper, Milami Vicario. And the Italian plays it forward towards Hoiberg, who now sits in front of that back line. Here's Emerson Royale to Davis. 1 0 to Tottenham. Just a note of caution, they took the lead against both Chelsea and Wolves uh, in the last two games and have conceded late goals. They've conceded four in added time in the last two games. The last four goals that they have conceded have come right at the end of matches. So, including that uh, Nicholas Jackson hat-trick, which was described rather unfairly as one of the worst hat-tricks ever scored. Esri Konza trying to roll it back to his goalkeeper, uh, Martinez. Here's Hoiberg, his scuffed header goes straight down the throat of John McGinn, but he's backed into by Hoiberg to try and come and win it back on the halfway line for Tottenham Hotspur. 32 and a bit minutes gone, 1-0 that they lead. I think it's harsh on Jackson. I think it's because he had so many chances to get a hat-trick. Here's Watkins, receives it over the halfway line, up against Emerson Royale, the former Brentford and Exeter man. Got smashed yesterday, Exeter. You see that 7-0 at Bolton. Uh, Gary Caldwell, their manager at the moment. At yeah. the moment, I say that rather uh, guardedly. Um, but Ollie Watkins, born, brought up in Devon, loses possession, and here comes Spurs. And the neath born Wales captain Ben Davis starts Spurs in motion again. He gets it back, does Davis. Dribbles it towards Hoiberg on the halfway line. 
Uh, on the left-hand touchline is a dogie, the Salso, the goal scorer, pokes it back to Davis halfway inside his own half. 34 and a half minutes have elapsed. Uh, sorry, 33 and a half minutes have elapsed in this game. There'll be about three or four at least added minutes. Maybe more, Phil, actually. Maybe more. With the offside decision and the Bentacore. And the goal. Foul. And, and the, the yellow goal. card. Yeah. Plenty of incident. Just one draw so far this season for Aston Villa as well. That was 1-1 against Wolverhampton Wanderers, who beat Spurs last time out. Spurs have it with Hill on the left-hand touchline, leading by a goal to nil, though. And Hoiberg again looking for runners. Dennis and Kulusevski and Son trying to break in behind that. As you say, Bradley, high line from Aston Villa. Trying to be disciplined with it, but it was an offside at the moment that has denied Villa a goal from Ollie Watkins. Hoiberg again plops it forward down the right-hand side. It's going to be... Met by Dejan Kulisevsky, here's Brennan Johnson who scored against Wolves, Kulisevsky, Swedish international, puts a shot wide of Emi Martinez. And an ooh and an ah from the south stand, as Kulisevsky looks to the heavens, hoping to add to his three goals for this season, he didn't quite get there, it's still 1-0. Yeah, the ball over the top, Kulisevsky chased down, put some pressure on Dina, and it came out, and between him and Johnson... They recycled it, and it was a teasing effort, wasn't it? Checks inside, yeah. curling effort with that trusty left foot just wide of the far post. Martinez at full stretch. Two clean sheets in ten for Spurs coming into this game, both of them in the last five, and they've won it again this time with ben, uh, with uh, Hoiberg. Down the right-hand side, whips in across straight into Martinez, who makes a comfortable gather. The 31-year-old Argentinian goalkeeper on the Golden Gloves. The World Cup. Been around a bit. The loan spells away from Arsenal before making the move to Aston Villa, which has been a pretty positive one since joining Villa back in 2020. Cash is trying to break in off the right-hand side. He steers it infield. He's the player who's going to get booed now by the Spurs fans because his clash with Benton cause led to the Uruguayan being substituted. The Golden Cockle being lit from underneath the way to our right-hand side on the top of the south stand up there, gleaming in the grey wintry e uh, afternoon skies as Spurs have won it through Kulisevsky. Son spins it out wide to Brennan Johnson on the right-hand side, drives towards the byline. Intervention, which just cushions it all the way back. It was uh, not a back pass, but it was an intervention in midfield from uh, Mara that cushions it all the way back to the goalkeeper, and it'll be picked up by Emiliano Martinez. 1-0 Tottenham, Bradley Allen, nine to go before the break. Yeah, I'd have to say, in terms of performance and but from the uh, the last couple of games, Phil, it's as good as I've seen Spurs play this season for, for half a game of football. They've been absolutely brilliant, haven't they, with and without the ball. Cash is dispossessed. Here's Lo Celso again. Not it's... given uh, Villa a moment to breathe in possession. And there's been such positivity and intent on the attacking play. That's a penalty at Billericay against Dulwich Hamlet in the Women's FA Cup second round. Dave Victor. Yes, it was a handball by Lucy Jones. The referee initially gave it a free kick to Billericay, but uh, he has uh, consulted with his assistant, and now it is Dulwich Hamlet's leading marksman, Sally Roberts, who is about to take this spot kick. And <laughs> Dulwich Hamlet are in front. It was Britt Saylor with the penalty kick and Dulwich Hamlet celebrates. It's Billericay Town nil, Dulwich Hamlet won. But Sailor, who, uh, Sailor, who spoke to us on Friday night, was hosting a Thanksgiving party. Well, it's worked. The six turkey legs or whatever they had on, in store, it's given them enough uh, fuel. And Dulwich Hamlet have taken the lead in the second round of the Women's FA Cup away there at Billericay, who banned drums and instruments for the Pepper Army. They made the announcement at 7 o'clock last, last night. Do you know what we say to that, Lucy? Do you know what we say? Boo! Boo! Yeah, boo! <laughs> anyway, Dulwich Hamlet are leading by a goal. So let's go to Ahmed, who's watching Chelsea against Leicester. WSL, Ahmed. Yeah, 38 minutes in. It's still 2-1 here, says Chelsea against Leicester City. Leicester pulling one back about just over 10 minutes ago for Rantala. Chelsea really needed it to be clearer than that at this day. Just a moment ago, they had a call for offside as Kirby got in behind Setoff Cuthbert when she put the ball into the net. Flag went up there and ended that attack. They have the ball inside the penalty area now. They really got to get clear sooner rather than later. As Leicester have been putting the pressure on. Chelsea keep their lead though at 2 1 with just five minutes to half time. Villa won it, lost it. Now it's Pedro Porro spins it out wide towards the right hand side. Brennan Johnson attacking again, tries to get beyond Luca Dinia. He has done, cuts it back. Heel tries to play it with a back heel to Dejan Kulisewski. Maybe a shot would have been a better option. Ollie Watkins pushed over and a free kick awarded. 
And Brian Hill with a wry smile knows maybe that was a great opportunity. Yeah. Brilliant work from Brennan Johnson. Unbelievable work across the pitch. Blistering pace by Johnson beyond Dinya. Unselfishly cut it back. And Gills flicked that. He could have stayed on the ball, really. Not really an option trying to lay that one off to, uh, to Kudoseski. No. But at least they're trying to create. Here come Villa, though. Stretching it forward is McGinn on the left-hand side. He's going to curl it towards Luca Dinia. Yellow booted. Former Everton player. First time cross blocked away. Good tracking back. And it's blocked out on that far touchline for a throw-in to Villa. Let's quickly go if we can. Arsenal against West Ham United. Women in the WSL. Another goal for Emily Herbert. It's Arsenal 3, West Ham 0. Beth Mead just took a nasty tackle. She was down for a couple of minutes. So she gets back up. She's OK. Gets her second goal inside the six-yard box. Slotting it home. Arsenal 3, West Ham 0. Well, Arsenal um, finding their rhythm. And West Ham United, well... It's not, uh, not looking great for Ryan Skinner, who last week was talking about that. the fact they're a team in transition. Uh, they've got a lot of work to do. The referee's given Spurs possession just inside the Villa half. Thought he was going to award a free kick and a foul. No, La Celso. Kamara's been booked, by the way. As is Cash, but he wins this strongly. No, he doesn't win it strongly. The doggy goes down. Matty Cash is obviously on a yellow card. Referee Robert Jones has given the free kick the, the two the thing is Osborne, the Spurs er, fans early, want early game yellow. I think he called some of them wrong the referee yeah. in terms of decision now he started to allow some advantage but actually the challenge by McGinn on on Holmberg when he's pulling him back Phil after the Dane won the ball the Spurs sub yeah that's probably a yellow card yeah in all honesty and then he's let it go clumsy from cash it's not a second yellow card. He, he, he doesn't deserve to be sent off from that. But actually, the one before that, the referee probably should have booked John McGinn, and he's been uh, a tad fortunate, I think. Uh, yeah. It's a uh, free kick inside the centre circle. Uh, and we will go very sh uh, very quickly to Kings Meadow. Chelsea against Leicester, Ahmed Noop. Yes, indeed, they're back in front by two now. Chelsea 3-1 up here. Bear with me, Charles the penalty here, and it's almost four. Th that third goal went in thanks to Charles's work down the left-hand side. She got around CJ Boss, squared it to Kerr, and no missing from three yards for Kerr. 3-1, Chelsea, three to half-time. Here's a doggy down the left-hand side for Spurs, pokes it in towards Kiel, left-hand side of the six-yard box. He can only bobble it to Miliano. Martinez, uh, Millwall Lionesses are one nil up in their FA Cup second round game against Bromley Ladies at this moment in time. Uh, about 10 minutes to go in that match. As here comes Diego Carlos for Aston Villa, who trail 1 0 to Tottenham Hotspur here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on BBC Radio London on a Sunday afternoon. Kath Melandri upcoming soon on 94.9 FM as Luca Dinia again manages to work his way down that left hand touchline. Poked that wide towards Luca Dinia again. They're queuing up for it if he can get a cross in there. It's blocked behind and out of play by Pedro Porro. And Aston Villa have their first corner of the afternoon. Uh, sorry, it's uh, Clara Hermit who's uh, presenting this afternoon. Thank you, Lucy. Well, you can stick with us with the football. Do that. Because um, this has been a really watchable 42 minutes of Premier League football so far, Bradley Ooh, Allen. Yeah, corner villa here. Yeah, and their set piece coach comes out and barks a few more instructions. There's the Austin McPhee. Here it comes. It's going to be clipped in. Right footed in swinger from that far touch line. Plenty of players to aim for. The likes of Esri Cons has gone forward. Ollie Watkins is inside the penalty area. Near post is Diaby. Robert Jones, the referee, wants to have a word with John McGinn. Who, uh, doesn't want to get pushed, doesn't want to push. It's getting pushed by Vicario. He's saying, look, I'm getting pushed. I've got every right to stand my ground, haven't I, says the Scottish international. Robert Jones may want to sort a little bit of this out. Here it comes, swirled in towards the near post, headed away. And then Robert Jones gives a free kick for a shove. Backing in is the uh, either that or he's doing the Bogo Pogo from uh, Strictly Ballroom. That's a uh, quite popular Australian film of some time ago. If you've not seen it, you don't know what I'm talking about with the Bogo Pogo. Anyway, that's what he was doing. As here comes Spurs down the left hand side, a doggy shuffles it towards Hoiberg. Son, he's in onside, into the edge of the penalty area. He's got Brennan Johnson with him. He doesn't need him. But the flag now goes up against Son Chun Min. They'll check it, surely. Am I offside? Says the South Korean. He battered it into the back of the net. 
The flag, though, on the far touchline has gone up against Son Hyun Min. We'll have a look at it, Bradley. This was close. Sweeping move. Yeah, yeah he's yard offside. offside. Good decision. Well done, the uh, assistant out on that right flank. It won't count. This has been great entertainment, though, Bradley. Great entertainment. And we've got a minute and a half of normal time at the end of this first half, plus some added on time to go. There are some people making their way towards the concourses. I, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't. I'd hold it in. Somehow, Bradley. Yeah. <laughs> Personally. I mean, I know that's probably not great, you know, for potential urinary tract infections, but <laughs> I, I still think this has been so entertaining. You could miss something. It's a free kick to Aston Villa halfway inside the... Spurs half. Uh, there's been another goal at Chelsea against Leicester in the WSL. Ahmed Nur. Indeed, we've been spoiled for goals here. It's now 3 2 to Chelsea. Leicester pulled one back again. Feeling's free kick hit the face of the post. An almighty scramble in the box led to what he believes Tierney turning it home in front of Cabergo. Couldn't stop it. And with four minutes added time in the first half, Chelsea now back to being one in front. 3 2. Liverpool won that up against Brighton and Hove Albion women. Arsenal leading West Ham United by three goals to nil. Manchester United beating Bristol City 2-0. Everton at Villa and Man City hosting Tottenham Hotspur women. Uh, that's later. Uh, the City Spurs game is at quarter to seven. Here comes a free kick, which Villa will take with Douglas Louise. Pokes it out wide to Diaby on the left-hand side. Brings it under control outside the Spurs penalty area. Six minutes of added on time to be played at the end of this first half. Kamara gets away from a couple of challenges. Manages to slip it out to the far flank. He gets caught by Porro, but it was a fair challenge. Infield it comes. Here's a shot, which is out of play. And the referee's being appealed to by John McGinn that that should be a corner kick. Meantime... Porro is down Crazy injured, Bradley Allen. That's just a play, wasn't it? That was Porro was full-blooded on the challenge on the far side. He's missed the ball. The referee allowed Aston Villa advantage. Yeah, well, Kamara poked it away from him. Yeah, it's a good challenge by Kamara. He was first to the ball. Porro's got injured. And then it ricocheted around. It did go out. It was a goal kick for Tottenham. John McGinn is in conversation with Giovanni Lo Celso, as if to say, well, then Brennan Johnson saying, was it foot high? I don't know. I mean, all this discussion, there's been some suggestion that players should be involved. Uh, Neil Warnock said the players should be in the VAR room. <laughs> try, and get play, try and get a couple of players to agree on one decision, Bradley. It'd be a nightmare, wouldn't it? And you'd have to get players who've not played or been anywhere, played for the club or for a rival. I've got, it would be I've got chaos. Two, two candidates for Scott Stutley Park from the football world. Go on. Steve Evans and Neil Warnock. <laughs> on, the, on the same shift. Could you imagine? Uh, well, Neil Warnock, to be fair to Neil Warnock, he is a qualified referee. Yeah. He qualified as a referee. Well, whether he's still qualified, probably not. He's also a qualified pedometrist, but I'm not sure I'd want him looking at me corns. I think he'd be wonderful for that gig, Phil. I'm not sure I'd mic him up, though. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Neil Warnock, VA, head of VAR. Come on, let's... Uh, let's uh, should we champion that? Yeah, let's, let's get the PGMOL on the line right now. See if Howard Webb's up for that. Two proud Yorkshiremen. Both Sheffield boys, aren't they? Yeah. Howard Webb, and he was a police sergeant, famously, in the uh, South Yorkshire Police Force. Uh, Howard Webb, that was, not Neil Warnock. <laughs> I'm sure he's. Uh, I'm sure he's had a few Qualified things to say. Chiropodist as well. Yeah, he was. Yeah, get your nails. I mean, he used to do his players. <laughs> players in grown toenails. He could he? do a bar and a nail bar as well. Couldn't <laughs> he? A nail bar. <laughs> Warnock's nail bar. Oh, I'd love that. Wouldn't you? I wonder if he has like that that little bowl of fish to. Uh... What, Lucy? Lucy's not buying into this conversation. It's a goal kick. We've sorted it out. Pedro Porro's all right. We don't need right. this humour, Phil, because this has been an amazing football match. Well, we just had a little bit of a hiatus there, yeah. didn't we? So uh, it's now back and underway and headed forward by Cash. Spurs on the halfway line. Great skill from La Celso. Pokes it back towards Emerson Royale, who uses the conservative option behind him. Didn't want to take any risks. It's gone back towards Vicario. And here is Ben Davis. Davis threads it up the touchline to Brian Hill on the halfway line, spinning nice. and turning and pirouetting clear of Esri Konza, and then Son is fouled. And it's a free kick awarded against Diego Carlos. Yeah. I'm not sure of this new one, Phil, an injured player that goes off the pitch. Oh. 
treatment and then the decision by the referee at some when to come back on to, to then come back on yeah oh dear, oh dear. anyway it's um through the center circle and uh, we've played 49 minutes so we've still got a couple of added minutes to go in this first half as Kulisewski now receives halfway inside the Aston Villa half of the pitch Lo Celso Spurs all in white chips it forward cleared away by the back line of Aston Villa as he Konza has to extricate himself from a rather difficult Spurs cul-de-sac here's Hoiberg who booms it back to his goalkeeper Vicario closed down eventually by Watkins for Aston Villa, but Spurs, oh, they've given it away. It's turned into the path of Diaby inside the penalty area. It's going to dribble towards Watkins and clattered away by Emerson. Spurs almost gifting Douglas Luiz the chance to create an opportunity. Here's McGinn, threads it back to Kamara. Spurs have got back into a decent defensive unit. Look at Dean, though, played over the top to him, down the left-hand side of the Spurs 18-yard box, whips in across. It'll be Watkins to attack it, headed away this time by Spurs in the shape of Ben Davis. Out comes Vicario, good claim from the Italian. Spurs peeling away, and he's going to bowl it over to this near touchline and Brian Hill. Minute and a half have added on time to play. Hill over the halfway line, checks back. And Matt Cash makes the uh, block tackle and he cushions it out of play yeah. for a throw in. A bit animated there, you don't often see that. And no. Kogalu, just Porro, just that, that turnover. He, he turned backwards, didn't he? Allowed the press, give the ball away, and Spurs almost got punished. The RB should have been a bit quicker on the through ball inside the penalty box. But between Heiberg and Davis, Spurs got back to uh, nullify that rare Aston Villa chance. He'll Rolls it infield to the goal scorer, Giovanni Lo Celso, has to poke it back into the path of Ben Davis. He's closed down by Diaby. There's like, if they're playing six minutes, there might be a little bit of extra added time. This is the danger moment. You don't want to give away a goal now for Aston Villa. Leading by a goal, to nil. It's gone back to Vicario. Douglas Luiz closes him down. His ball out wide to this near touchline will be kept in by Brian Kiel. Who steps away from a couple of challenges, plays it almost towards Watkins and eventually scrambled away by Vicario. And that's the problem with being a little bit lax with the ball. That almost was a back pass from Hill straight to Watkins and Vicario got him out of an embarrassing situation. Yeah. And now a foul on Cash is given yeah, he, Villa one last chance on this left hand side. But just a couple of times on receiving the ball, Phil, his first touch has gone backwards, hasn't it? I think he could sometimes open up and maybe play around the back of Konza, especially with the uh, defensive line that Aston Villa have largely adopted in this first half, but uh, on that back pass, put Vigario in a spot of bother, and from the clearance, the Celso foul cash free kick here, probably last action of the half. The Brazilian Luiz will take it in towards the six-yard box, and that is the equaliser, flying header from Pau Torres, Douglas Luiz with the delivery, Spurs didn't defend it, they in the last two or three minutes have just presented chances to Aston Villa to give them hope, that one won't get pulled back, Pau Torres with a powerful header, and we have parity at the break, it's Spurs 1, Aston Villa 1. Spurs will be kicking themselves a little bit, having played brilliant for 45 minutes of this first half, they've just through lapses of concentration, allowed Aston Villa just that little bit of light at the end of the tunnel and from the delivery, it's a terrific ball from Luis. Torres up from the back, he's powered the header into the top left-hand corner, thumping finish. Oh, And he's put Villa on level terms. I mean, that's about the delivery, it's about the run... And it's about the fact that the defenders just couldn't get in front of him. Ben Davis was tracking him back, but the yeah. ball was put into a path where he could and get one ahead thing of Ben Davis. I can guarantee, Phil, Aston Villa will be way better in the second. Hang on. They are now checking it, Bradley Allen, for a possible offside. So it may not count. It may come back. Oh, the celebrations and Pau Torres are being shown on our screens here, Bradley Allen. Mm. Oh, I can't look at that, Phil. Flip of the coin, that one, isn't it? Oh, Do you have your magnifying glass? Oh, I don't know on the angle. but Right knee, good. left shoulder, left earlobe. Could be, yeah. Right nostril. Yeah, a little bit of... Uh, left shin bit pad. On the untended nasal hair. I'm not quite sure what's, what it would be on or off, Bradley, but they're checking blue, it. Blue stripe, left side of the uh, right part of the it's shorts. Onside. It's onside, onside yeah. it will count. Super header from Torres. And a great delivery from Luis. 
Douglas Luiz's delivery, Pau Torres's header, one apiece as we head towards half time. It's his second goal of the season for Pau Torres, who uh, has um, played under Unai Emery here in Spain, and it's a goal which has restored a bit of parity. We've played 54 minutes now. It's been given away to John McGinn as well, and here come Villa. Diaby won't get on the end of it. And Spurs could do with their half-time pick-me-up at the moment, Bradley, because they have made some costly errors in the last couple of minutes. Eventually, it led to that equaliser, and that could have been very, very dangerous. And I think Ange Postacoglu probably wants to get his team in and have a chat, unless they get a chance here as Cash manages to stretch back to Konza. Uh, here is Cash again. He ships it down the far touchline to Diaby. That's going to be a Spurs throw. We've played almost 10 minutes of added time when we were told there was going to be six. Value for money, I suppose, but not if you're Spurs, because that equaliser came after, effectively, we, we played the six, Bradley. So it'll be frustrating as well as it's poked down the touchline and Son goes back to Ben Davis. And now we don't know how much added on time is being added on to the added on time, Bradley, no. which, again, causes fans a little bit of frustration. But as the Robert Jones the blows the whistle. as well, Phil. Yeah. Spurs taking the lead through Giovanni Lo Celso and actually taking the lead deservedly at that time because they were pressurising Sp uh, Villa, who had seen Martinez make a couple of saves, he'd seen a couple of blocks as well. Lo Celso shot, deflected somewhat by Diego Carlos, past the former Arsenal goalkeeper to give Spurs the lead. We saw a bit of a moment where Matty Cash clashed into Rodrigo Benson, who now had to be replaced by Pierre-Emile Hoiberg. But in the last few minutes, into added time at the end of the first half, Spurs a little bit way with a back pass, which put Vicario under a bit of pressure. Presenting a chance on the edge of their own penalty area, which was smothered away, and then a free kick, and again a rather softly given away free kick, which saw Douglas Ruiz whip it into Pau Torres to power a header in for Aston Villa's equaliser on the stroke at half time. Really entertaining for the neutral, really frustrating at the half time interval, though, for Ange Postacoglu, who's much changed Spurs' side, thought they were going to have the advantage at the break. As it stands, though, it's all square. Tottenham Hotspur 1, Aston Villa 1. BBC Radio London. The home of London football. football. Oh, Bradley, well, Phil called it perfectly there. They just had that ascendancy towards that closing stages of the first half. And having started so, so brightly, I think you thought they could have been three or four up. Well, How frustrating will that be for Spurs? Because very, with the Benton core injury as well, it's a big second half now. Very much, Lucy. I, I, I have to say, of, of the games that I've covered and watched Spurs under this new manager this season, that's as good for 40, 45 minutes that I've seen them play. Thrilling going forward, brave, running, passing, getting the ball into that final third and penalty box, creating not only half chances, but some real guilt-edged chances. One or two were offside, tight calls, but they should have probably been three up, really. And uh, Phil said goals. Well, we've had exactly that, but just two lapses in concentration. One through Poro, then through Gill, challenge on Cash, delivery from Luis, Toro's up from the back to nod in that equaliser. It's game on. Yeah. With a, with a coach of Unai Emery's pedigree, I think he'll steam into those Villa players at half-time. He'll change his formation. I think it suggested they went to a back five um, on the stroke of half-time. And, and they will be much better organised because they've given Spurs too much room. They've been too slow in possession. Spurs have pressed brilliantly, really on the front foot. But Aston Villa, I think, will improve. Don't know which way this game's going to mm -hmm. go. I think the one thing for sure, like Phil has said, there will be more goals. 1-1 one, one it is. Yeah, I, I've noticed a bit of frustration from Sun and Kulisevsky. Is that kind of the effect of Brian Hill and the Celso having to come in? Just that front system maybe not so used to playing together hasn't got quite that fluency that we have seen from Spurs and maybe that was something that, that will improve in the second half. Well it's had moments obviously the Celso on the score sheet with his deflected effort. Gill put in a, a lovely teasing cross from that left hand side that Son was inches away but on other occasions you're right there maybe was just a, a, a lacking of a, a, of a touch of a connection of a weighted pass even across Lucy and the, the quality of the final ball that possibly would have put uh, Dejan or, or, or Sonny in a better goal-scoring position. But Spurs have got to keep going. They've got to keep persevering. What do we know, Lucy, about Tottenham? They're not going to play any different. No. They're not going to all of a sudden drop back in and uh, play from a, you know, a deep block against an Aston Villa side. They are going to attack when the moment presents itself. They're going to go for it. 
uh, and, and I think we're going to in, be in store for another wonderful second half and uh, one that's going to have full of excitement. Yeah, well, do not go anywhere. We are in for a roller coaster ride of a second period. If it's anything to go by what we've just seen in the first, what was it, Phil? 52 minutes? Oh, no, I think 56, 50. I think 56 and a bit. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> 11 and a bit minutes of added time. Chaos. Absolute chaos. Right, let's check in with our couple of games elsewhere in the WSL. It's been chaos for Ahmed Noor at Kings Meadow. Chelsea, Leicester City. What's the halftime story, Ahmed? Indeed, halftime here. 3-2 to Chelsea against Leicester. Quite a cold day, warmed up by some rather exciting football out on the Kings Meadow field today. Chelsea raced into a 2-0 lead in spite of four minutes, thanks to Leicester's doubt sort of giving it to them at the beginning. Ball played in towards James. She was comfortable with her finish, and it was doubled three minutes later after... Kirby and Kerr connected well, laid the ball in towards James again, who found a shot saved by keeper Unina Leipzig, but was parried into Nevin's own net. That put Chelsea into a 2 0 lead. Bit of a lull in the game, but really, after that, Chelsea should really have gone further clear. They've had efforts from Kerr hit the roof of the net. They had an offside goal on Cuthbert, called for a tight, very tight offside call on uh, Frank Kirby. But Leicester began their comeback through a Petterman, what bit, brilliant piece of play from Petterman. She got round Carter, released uh, Rantar who fired in at the near post, bringing her side back into it at 2-1. Chelsea would then restore their two-goal lead uh, just about, just under 10 minutes, five minutes before half-time. Charles, with an excellent run down the left, got the better of CJ Bott, squared it into the path of Co, who simply couldn't miss from four yards, finding the roof of the net. Thinking that they were somewhat safe, Chelsea defended their half pretty well, but then a free kick given on the edge of the box for a foul by Ankertrin Berger on Petterman led to Wheeler hitting the post. However, Sam Tierney inside the six-yard area turned in and has made the score three to a half-time. Emma Hayes with this half-time team to will want to make sure her side get clear in the second half. Lest they've pushed them a little bit since going 2-0 down and have really made them, this game a little bit more of a contest than a lot of people would have thought. So Chelsea lead three to a half-time, but will be a little bit careful in the second half of Leicester's comeback. Go for a lie down, Ahmed. Sounds pretty much as chaotic as we've had here. What about at Meadow Park, Arsenal, West Ham, London Derby, Emily Herbert? Half time at Meadow Park and Arsenal was sitting comfortably in front with three goals to nil. Manham kicking the Gunners off with an absolute rocket into the top corner from outside the box. And then Beth Mead opens her scoring the season with two goals. First from outside the box into the top corner and then inside the six yard box. Tapping it in, assisted beautifully by Alessia Russo. A huge moment for her after a difficult 12 months. Arsenal in total control here. Arsenal three West Ham nil. Elsewhere in the WSL at half time, it's Liverpool 2, Brighton nil. Their positive season continues, obviously, bouncing back from that heavy defeat to Chelsea last time out. It's Bonner and Van der Sanden with the goals, and it finished Bristol City nil, Manchester United 2. Those goals from Miyazawa and Paris, meaning that they secured all three points. As the table stands, it's Chelsea who sit first, Arsenal second, Manchester United up to third at the moment. Obviously, Manchester City playing later against Tottenham. Uh, right, we need to get to the FA Cup. The Pepper Army, including the one and only Dave Victor. Let's check in on important drum news and the latest score from you, Dave. And it's half-time here. Billericay Town nil, Dulwich Hamlet won. There is no doubt that the visitors, who are two tiers below Billericay, deserve their advantage. They've created seven clear-cut chances. They've forced five excellent saves from Hope Smith. The penalty decision looked an obvious one. It was uh, poor Lucy James that uh, handled, but the referee, Abby, uh, Anthony Abs, initially gave a free kick to the home side, but uh, at least he consulted with his assistant, Michael Wallace, and eventually the penalty was awarded, and it was Brett Saylor, the captain, who stepped up and was spot on. Alongside me is Alex, normally he's here with the Pebri Harmony, and a drum, but not today, Alex. Uh, no, so we've, we've normally got a, a drum, but we found out at 6pm last night they'd uh, changed the ground rules to, to ban it. Um, it doesn't make a, a, a bit a jot of difference. Like, we, we've got, like, 200 people here. We've got an amazing atmosphere. But I've just got to say, like, if I was a three-tier, a, a tier-three women's side and I was playing a fifth-tier women's side in the cup and I was really confident about it, I wouldn't be worried about a drum at 6 o'clock the night before a game. 
Um, so I think that tells you where their mind is. And the fact that we're one nil up at half time says a lot about where their heads are at. And even without a drum, there's been a tremendous atmosphere from the Pepper uh, Pep Army who are looking to cause another upset this afternoon. Half time, it is Billy Ricky nil, Dulwich Chaplin one. Fantastic. Thank you, Dave. Sounds amazing down there. And we will, of course, be hooking Aaron Paul up with someone of the Pepper Army on tomorrow night's London Torture if they can pull off another scalp. Sounds like they're well on their way. Now, more on that incredibly sad news that former Tottenham and England manager and London footballing legend Terry Venables has died at the age of 80. A statement from his family read, we are totally devastated by the loss of a wonderful husband and father who passed away peacefully yesterday after a long illness. We would ask that privacy be given at this incredibly sad time to allow us to mourn the loss of this lovely man who we were so lucky to have in our lives. Venables won La Liga and reached the Europe European Cup final with Barcelona and won the FA Cup with Tottenham. He began his playing career at Chelsea before spells at Spurs, Queen's Park Rangers and Crystal Palace going on to manage those three as well. He managed England, of course, from 1994 to 1996, most notably leading them to the semi-finals of Euro 96 on home soil. Well, let's hear from the man himself speaking some years ago to Gary Richardson on BBC Five Live, discussing where he ended up and where it all began. My mother always used to say, because when I was playing in the streets, because it was great in those days, there was no cars, there was... Then we had the parks, and you look back, how wonderful it was me. I was just happy to be a player. That's all I wanted to be. But obviously my mother would see me trying to organise everyone and being too busy for my own good and telling them what to do. And uh, she said, well, I think, you, I, I think you're going to be a manager. I said, well, it's a bit early. <laughs> Can I just finish playing first? Yeah, you, you had an autograph book, didn't you? And you signed it, Terry Venables, Tottenham manager. <laughs> That's true. That's actually, I was 10 years of age. Yeah, yeah. Um, you eventually signed for Chelsea, uh, yep. made your debut at 17, an £18 a week footballer. That's right, because that was when the ma maximum wage was abolished and um, Johnny Ains was always promised by Tommy Trinder, the chairman of uh, Fulham. That the, gr if, the great it, comedian. Yeah, he was, and he was a, he was a really good... Uh, chairman because he did what he said he, uh, that would happen. Johnny Ains, um, when it was abolished, the £20, he let him have the £100 uh, a week and it was, uh, I thought that, that was actually um, first class. So we all tried to think to ourselves, well, we're going to have a field day. I went in and I think I was at that time getting about £12 a week in the first team and come out and I've, with my great negotiating powers, I, I come out with the same money. <laughs> it wasn't too good, actually. So I think I'll give up that and stay on playing football. But you see, what, what amazes me is that uh, there you were, a, a top player playing yeah. for a first division side, Chelsea, yeah. and yet you didn't have your own car, and no less than Jimmy Greaves was taking you to training and driving you to matches. Well, Jimmy was three years older, I mean, he was a fantastic player. I mean, really, uh, if only there was more footage of Jimmy Greaves, you would see a player that could score goals like Messi. I mean, uh, and I'm not kidding. He was a fantastic player. Anyway, he did say to me, um, look, you're playing on Saturday. I played about three games. We were playing West Bromwich Albion. So he said, how do you get to the ground? I said, well, I normally go by tube for, for the match on Saturday. So he said, well, I'll pick you up at Martin's Lane in Dagenham. So I said, OK. So he, he come in and he was chugging along in his car, picks me up. So he said to me, um, oh, by the way, I always stop it. Gans Hill, Ilford. I said, but that's a bit off the track, Jim. I mean, we've got to play at three o'clock. So he wants he, to stop for lunch. So he, he, sorry, that's what he said. He then says, we'll have something to eat. I said, I don't want anything to eat. I just want to get to the ground. No, no, you'll be okay. So I did as I was told. He said, what do you want to eat? So I said, well, I'll have a, a piece of um, toast and maybe a bit of boiled chicken. Really? Is that what you, is that what you want? I said, well, of course. So he, I said, in fact, I just a bit... Too much. So he said, no, no, it's all right. Up comes his regular, his roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, vegetables, <laughs> gravy, everything but the kitchen sink was on that plate. And I said to him, you're not, you're not going to eat that, Jim. Behave. So he said, well, I do it every week. I said, you can't. I said, it goes beyond what everyone says you can eat before a game. Anyway, he goes and he, he eats the lot. And I, I was just looking at him the whole lunchtime. I said, and I kept saying, well, come on, Jim, now I'm OK, I've still got to have dessert. I went, oh, no. <laughs> so anyway, we get there, we play the game, we won 7-1, he scored five goals. <laughs> uh, so who don't, I'm not making it up. Five goals, and I think myself, oh, my God, I'm not eating the right food. Now Gascoigne in the area, keeps his footing, the ball from Sheringham, Shearer can make it three, and he does! 
Terry, you say the greatest day in your football career was when you were manager of England and they beat Holland in the 1996 European Championships. Yeah, because I I got into being the England manager, um, yeah, it was two, two and a half, two and a half years. And from that moment, I'd always thought about being an England manager, always thought about uh, what's possible, what's not possible. And so it gives you a chance to actually put your thoughts and feelings and your work in that you would like to see. And especially if you're in your own country, England often won games at home, but I wanted to do it in a in style. And it was a risk because we changed things. Uh, the, the, boys, the, the formation, it was totally new to the team in a way, wasn't it? It was new. And also um, you have to make sure they're going to be with you because it's, they could have egg on their face trying to do something they wasn't used to. Most players say, oh, I don't do that, I do this, I do that. And you say, well, you do it somewhere else because, you know, this is serious business. This is this is not us playing at school now. This is, this is what we want. I said to the players that it's too big for me to take soft option decisions. It's got to be done. You've got to be in or you're out. There's no, There's nothing in the middle. And during that time was wonderful for me. We had players that wouldn't drop under pressure. And that is something that, that has happened a lot in the past. So what you need is people that are leaders. Of course, Gaza was the one in, right in the centre of all this. He was the inspiration, but they wasn't jealous of that. They thought, we want him. Honestly, he was so much like Maradona in as much as he was a king on the pitch. All these things are just... Wonderful memoirs, really. Shearer now back to Anderton. Anderton strike deflected. Manazar hasn't got it out. Sherry is there! And it's 4-0 to England! It's 4-0 to England! And Terry Venables here is outwitting the team that he respects perhaps most of all in European football from Holland with all their famous Ajax stars. Well, amazing memories, incredible here, there from Terry Venables, who has sadly died at the age of 80. Uh, right, we've got Tottenham out in front of us. Aston Villa just mustering in the tunnel. So we are in for another, hopefully, thrilling half of football. However long it may last, we could be here well into the night. But uh, let's get you back to our commentary team of Bradley Allen alongside Phil Parry. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Lucy, Aston Villa are going to make some changes. A couple of them are coming on as well. So we're going to see Leon Bailey and Yuri Tillemans come on. Uh, Diaby has been replaced. And is that Kamara, I think, was the other one to be replaced by Unai Emery, the Aston Villa manager. He's on a yellow card and Diaby's been replaced as well. So Bailey on, Tillemans on and the referee will blow his whistle and get us off and underway in a moment or two. Spurs with Vicario in goal, Porro, uh, Royale, Emerson Royale, Davis and Adogi to back four. Hoiberg is now on for the injured Benton Coy, went off in the first half in the cell. So Hill, Kulisewski, Johnson, Son Hyun Min. Uh, Martinez in goal for Aston Villa, who've got Esri Conta, Diego Carlos, Pau Torres and Luca Dean. They're back four, Matt Cash, Yuri Tillemans now, Douglas Lewis and John McGinn. Uh, with Leon Bailey and Ollie Watkins uh, in that lineup as well. So uh, Tillemans has gone pushing forward alongside Watkins. And uh, no, it's not Kamara who's gone off, uh, Bradley. Just trying to work out who's the. Um, is it Matty Cash he's taken off? Matty Cash, yeah. yeah he's taken off Matty Cash, sorry. Um, the two. Yeah, oh, well, potentially yellow card that he may. Uh, pick up and again that would be somewhat dangerous as far as Villa are concerned as Brian Hill attacks the Spurs attacking the south stand in this second half tries to get space for the cross it's been smuggled away and here come Aston Villa uh, given um, the possession back and the boos were for the fact that Matty Cash has been taken off Bradley and I think that's maybe a protection thing yeah he possibly. was on his last yeah actual contact 50 50 challenge wasn't he yeah and if he'd have got, got it wrong or mistimed it he would have been uh, certain to be uh, red carded uh, that's a foul uh, which is awarded by robert jones the another one referee kamara he's kamara. on a yellow isn't he exactly although there was that's not a bookable offense and i don't think bradley it's no. just a, sort of coming together so i don't think the referee's going to take action on that front but it is a free kick to spurs in a handy position pubakar kamara on that yellow card, Ange Postacoglu stood on the edge of his coaching box. Spurs have it inside the centre circle. Uh, Fraser Forster, Brandon Austin, two goalkeepers, Oliver Skip, Eric Dyer. 
All on the bench. Uh, Velis, Donnelly, Dorrington joining them, Bradley. For uh, Aston Villa, they still have Robin Olsen, Alex Moreno, Clement Longley, of course, who spent a season here at Tottenham Hotspur. John Duran, Leandro, Don Donker, Jacob Ramsey and Tink, Tim Ruggerm, uh, Boonham, who had a uh, loan spell at QPR last season, or on the bench still for Unai Emery. He's at the edge for his technical area now. Spurs carry it forward through Emerson Royale with that rather distinctive style of his. Poked away from him by Douglas Luiz. Spurs with possession with Ben Davis. Clips it out wide towards Brennan Johnson on this right-hand side. Brings it under control, sweeps it back infield. Is that a foul? It is by Douglas Luiz. And a free kick on the point of the Villa penalty area. Just trying to win the ball in front of Pedro Porro. Free kick has been awarded for a foul on the Spurs right back. Yeah, good start. A couple of minutes into this second half from Spurs. Pressing the ball, but enjoying possession, forcing... The whole of the Aston Villa team back, really, to yeah. uh, to defend their own 18-yard box. And just a clumsy challenge by Louise on Porro. In-swinger, possibly, from Dejan here from Spurs' right. Free kick. Free kick, which will be possibly an in-swinger, as you say, from Dejan Kulisewski. A shot, Phil, maybe. Could be a shot. Milano Martinez is just trying to marshal his two-player wall. Uh, he's happy with where Luca Dean has positioned himself. Pedro Porra puts his left hand up in the air. There are players to attack this free kick if it's going to be whipped in. It's punched away by uh, Martinez. The clearance finds Lo Celso. He drives another shot, which is deflected wide this time. It's a corner kick. Lo Celso scoring for the first time in Spurs colours since 2021. He was trying to get a second, Bradley. He's got green yeah, for them. He actually scuffed it a little bit. I think it struck uh, Torres on its way through. It's taken short this time, Hill pushes it into midfield where Adogi's waiting. He pumps it around the corner to Porro again, he drives it in near post, this is blocked up in the air. It's going to boom out of play for another corner kick to Spurs on this right-hand side. Fourth of the game for Tottenham Hotspur. Quickly taken again, Kulusevski. There's two balls on the pitch as it's headed over the top of the bar. I think there would have been a problem with that if it had counted. Oh, I don't know what the ruling on that is, Phil. <laughs> no. Millwall Lionesses into the third round of the FA Cup for women after a victory against Bromley this afternoon. And uh, AFC Wimbledon women have been knocked out elsewhere, though, today in the uh, FA Cup. And Brentford have just kicked off against Southampton. It's 1 0 to Dulwich Hamlet at uh, Billericay, by the way, and that's come off. A Villa player, rather languidly, the goal scorer, Pau Torres, pushes it out of play for a throw into Tottenham Hotspur, which Pedro Porro wants to take. They've started this first, uh, this second half brightly of Tottenham. Most of the opening five minutes has been spent in the Aston Villa half of the pitch. Here is Pierre-Emile Hoiberg, poked back by the goal scorer, Lo Celso, to Emerson Royale, playing alongside Ben Davis at the heart of that Tottenham Hotspur defence. Now Kulusevski popping up in centre midfield, poked out wide towards Brennan Johnson, his cross towards the far post, Hill tries to get a shot away, closed down by Esri Konza, and then he whips it out of play for a goal kick. Yeah, he just twisted and run out of room, really, when the ball squirmed across the gill on that uh, left side of the penalty box. Spurs were working it really well. Johnson's cross was deflected back inside, wasn't it, rather than round the uh, the back of the defence. Look to put the Aston Villa back four under all sorts of pressure. Oh, I thought uh, AFC Wimbledon women were heading potentially out, but they've uh, closed down the... Uh, the deficit, they're now trailing at uh, Ramsgate by four goals to... Th uh, sorry, Chatham, should I say, by four goals to three. So, still time to play there. It's a throw into Spurs on the right-hand side. Poked back to Porro, just inside his own half of the pitch, Pedro Porro. Um, Hoiberg gets caught as he managed to filter it forward towards Kulisewski. Here's a dogie, slips on the ball halfway inside the Villa half of the pitch. Kulisewski again pokes it towards the right. Brennan Johnson's got Porro taking defenders away. Here comes the cross. Villa, though, with the first header away into midfield. Hoiberg. Just lets it ride across towards Adogi, drops the shoulder, powers forward. Villa have won it, though. On transition, maybe. They can break forward. McGinn looks to dink it towards Bailey on the right-hand side. And Leon Bailey now attacking the Spurs penalty area. He's got Ollie Watkins in support. Steps away from a couple of challenges, takes a shot. Oh, it's palmed on.
on to the post by Vicario, who gets back to his feet to gather oh. the ball from slipping over the goal line. Well, it squirmed through his greasy hands, didn't it? And ever so close to sort of being completely against the run of play. First six minutes of this second half, a Villa goal which would have nudged them 2-1 in front. Bailey again, born in uh, Kingston, Jamaica, on that right-hand side, straying forward. Created that opportunity. It's his ninth time off the bench, involved in 18 games so far this season for Aston Villa. We have it again now inside the Spurs half, and they ping it towards Luca Dean down the left-hand side. He rolls it back to the goal scorer, Pau Torres. Let's go around our other games then, shall we, this afternoon. We've got uh, featured matches in the WSL uh, and at uh, Arsenal's game in the WSL and the FA Cup. Let's go first, though, to Kings Meadow. There shortly, actually, for Ahmed Noor's latest from Chelsea against Leicester as Luca Dean tries to whip in across. Gone out for a corner kick to Villa. Ahmed, what's the latest in your second half? Yeah, indeed. Uh, coming, up to, coming up to the hour now, Chelsea have gone back in front by four goals to two now. Lawrence James, sixth goal of the season. It was a brilliant bit of work from Kirby to force the error. Kurt played it into the path of James. Chip finish, 4-2 now. Thank you very much indeed. Corner kick, Villa. They're going to take it over on this left hand side their fans are gathered in that sort of quadrant in the far corner diagonally opposite where we're stood at the north end of the ground with the east side of the ground and it's another set play Phil yeah that of course brought Villa back on level terms on the 51st minute which brings their set piece coach out to the edge of his technical area and here comes Luis with it right footed clips it towards the far post Brian Hill is the man they've looked to try and get over the top of him but it's cleared to Dejan Kuliseski over the halfway line being tracked back on that far touch line by uh, Carlos manages to fault it forward to Saad, it's far post and Saad and sliding just beyond it. Brennan Johnson can't turn it goalwards and then it's uh, Pedro Porro tries to win it back. Villa plays it towards the halfway line. Here's the bustling John McGinn, runs it over the touchline. Throwing quickly taken by Hoiberg, but that was a real chance on counter-attacking football for Spurs. And Brennan Johnson couldn't get his second Tottenham yeah, goal. Yeah, lovely control and speed on the counter-attack from one penalty box to another. Kuliseski's cross, Johnson sliding in at the far post, inches away. Great noise inside the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Ben Davis sweeps it out wide towards the left-hand side. Back it comes to Davis on the halfway line. I wonder if we can bring in Dave Victor, because I think there's been another goal at Dulwich Hamlet's FA Cup tie away at Billericay. Dave. And it's an equaliser for Billericay, who've been very positive since the restart. And it was Billericay that grabbed the equaliser in the 55th minute after the ball broke wide on the right-hand side, and it was Welsh with a right foot strike into the bottom corner of the net. It's Villa Ricky Town one, Dunwich Hamlet one. Villa attack, now Spurs attack, and it's poked towards Son, edge of the penalty area. Son Shin Men takes it wide, sliding tackle though. Diego Carles gets it clear. Hill back in field to La Celso, around the corner to Son. He shoots and it saves. There's an offside flag anyway, wouldn't have counted. At one end where Bailey was attacking for Aston Villa, and I thought he may have been fouled, Bradley. Spurs then broke on Villa, who were peeling forward. And Emilio Martinez has the ball in his hand. One apiece, by the way, Dulwich Hamlet at Billericay. And let's go to Arsenal against West Ham United. Emily Herbert. Arsenal 3, West Ham 0. The second half has kicked off here, and West Ham look much more rapid on the ball this half. Most of the players have been in the Arsenal defensive area. The, Ars the Irons creating more chances, forcing a few saves. The Gunners just able to hold them off. Arsenal 3, West Ham 0. Great atmosphere inside the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. One apiece. First against Aston Villa, who play it through their penalty area rather riskily, and then into midfield. One back strongly by Tottenham. Here's Kulisewski. He's got some wide of him. Bobbled clear, though, by Bubakar Kamara, who steps back from one challenge. It's dinked out wide by Diego Carlos to that far touchline. Here is Douglas Luiz, runs into a little bit of traffic, manages to poke it behind him. And now on the halfway line, it's McGinn. He turns away from the Spurs fight player, trying to attack him. Then he muscles clear of Hoiberg. He's got Watkins to his left, filtered into the path of Watkins, who stumbles inside the penalty area. Gets to his feet, though, does Ollie Watkins. He had Bailey steaming up towards the far post. He fell on the ball, he couldn't filter it towards the Jamaican. Now here come Villa again on the right-hand side, driving into the area goes Kamara and Esri Konza receiving it, falling over the challenge, cleared away by a doge. This game is end-to-end, -end, Bradley Allen. Basketball match, Phil, isn't it? Wouldn't look out of place in the NBA. Crazy. 
So many go-mouth opportunities. Both sets of players are recognising that. Villa on transition in their own half, breaking on the counter-attack. Spurs, they're just going for it every single time they're in possession of the ball, feeding their attacking players. Kulisevsky Relentless. down the uh, right-hand side. He runs into Luca Dean, who just held his line, really. The Spurs fans claiming that there was a foul, but Luca Dean was between Kulisevsky and the ball, and he went for a piggyback ride at the Swedish internationals. It's chipped that wide towards Konza on the right-hand side. Leon Bailey says, look, I'll take charge of the situation, and drives it back to the former Charlton and Brentford man. Uh, he started playing football at Senrab. Have, many have Bradley Allen in East London. As here is Pau Torre. It's 57 and a half minutes gone. One apiece. The Villa fans now finding their voice in midfield. Uh, is that a foul? It is this time on Yuri Tillemans, former Leicester man, arrived at a free transfer in the summer. And it's swept that wide towards Bailey, who's up against the Dogi down that right-hand side for Aston Villa. Tries to take it wide over Dogi, then checks back in field. Is he being manhandled? That's his claim. No, says Robert Jones, the referee, and here comes Spurs. 58 minutes gone, one apiece. Son over the halfway line. Dogi goes forward with him. Hill goes down the left-hand flank, tracked back by Kamara. He's only got one man to aim for. It's Johnson. His cross is deep and kept in by Kulisevsky on the right-hand side, attacking the south stand. Here goes Dejan Kulisevsky inside the penalty area. Just enough of a challenge from McGinn to take it away from him. Pedro Porra to uh, charts of Brennan. Johnson to Son! Flag goes up. Son Hyun Min says, was it me offside? And I think it probably was, Bradley. Yeah, I'm not sure Johnson needed to cross that. No. It might be him. It was clever. A so little good. disguised pass, wasn't it? Fed through from yeah. um, well, they're both offside. Hoiberg, but yeah. both of them were off. Correct decision again. Yeah, Son was offside from the initial pass, as was Brennan Johnson. Won't count. 59 gone. 1-1, Bradley Allen. The game has continued in the same vein as the first the half. The game right? has not disappointed. <laughs> well, fourth versus fifth. We're blessed to be here, Phil, aren't we? What a football match. Fourth Once versus again. fifth. Spurs could go third. Villa can go fourth. That's what's on the uh, line today. And then that's a foul by Kulisewski on Pau Torres. And AFC Wimbledon have made it 4-4 against Chatham. Daisy McClacklin with the equaliser. 4-4 in that game. Extraordinary stuff. Millwall Lioness is through. And that is quite an entertaining game there, being treated to down on the Medway there in the uh, famous naval dockyard area of Chatham. One apiece here. It could be a lot more, Bradley. Yeah. Either way, I mean, you know, Villa have had some chances in this second half, and they go long over the top for Ollie Watkins to chase on to. Vicario heads it away as far as McGinn, who takes a shot from 40 yards out. Worth a go. It well wide. It was worth a go. He showed that and had to employ those tactics for Cario yeah. when Spurs played Chelsea here when they were down to nine men. He was like the sweeper keeper, weren't he? Rushing out any ball Chelsea played in behind. Exactly the same. He headed it, but it went straight to the Scott McGinn. half volleyed effort. In midfield, McGinn almost wins it, but Hoiberg is sliding in and takes it away from him. Uh, Southampton are beating Brentford women at the moment in the FA Cup second round. Douglas Luiz breaks it away from Kulisevsky. It's on a knife edge, really, at the moment. Here goes Luka Dinia over the halfway line, retains possession, manages to shield it away from Hoiberg and then wins a throw-in halfway inside the Spurs half off the Dane. 60 minutes gone, Bradley Allen. It's still one apiece. I think there'd be substitutes as well, Phil, at some stage. Just the uh, the physical effort both sets of players have, have put in. Kamara. The sprints, the running. Yeah. Tielemans received it initially. Kamara has it again, halfway inside the Spurs half. Threads it forward to Watkins. Tielemans looking for Watkins in the area, takes a shot. This time he does get his goal. Ollie Watkins got it out from his feet really quickly. Filtered into the path of the Devonian, who drives it low and hard beyond Vicario. And Villa leading this game for the first time. 61 minutes gone. It's Spurs 1, Aston Villa 2. Yeah, lovely little bit of football. A little give and go. And the England striker between two defenders took his shot early. Accuracy across the goalkeeper into the bottom left-hand corner to give the villains a lead. 1-2. He has scored seven in the Premier League now. Ollie Watkins, he's also got five assists to his name. I mean, he is really the potent force that Villa use. And let's give credit for that to Dean Smith. 
former Villa manager, but when he was at Brentford, turned him into that number nine. Absolutely, that Ollie Watkins has really capitalised from. We've, and Spurs have got to work work to do now. We've Brent. seen his development, haven't we? You know, he, he, he's been on our eye, our radar since his days at Exeter, then to Brentford. He's he's been a player that's been a work in progress, but he's persevered, super fit. And he really is the, the modern-day centre-forward and, uh, and scoring consistently at the highest level now on the focal point of this Aston Villa side. So Spurs need to respond. Third game in a bounce that they've gone behind, having taken the lead in the match in this run uh, that has been difficult and challenging, made so challenging, not just with suspensions. Romero suspended for this, Basuma suspended for this, but the injuries and picking up another one today with Benton Court making his first start since February for Spurs getting caught by Matty Cash in the first half and having to go off to be replaced by Hoiberg. There's still a long way to go in this game. As Watkins this time wins it illegally from Emerson Royale, which is a bit of a relief, I think, for the Spurs defender because Watkins was in on goal and away. Adogi slips it into midfield. Test of character for Spurs again, Bradley. As Emerson Royale has it and Unai Emery barks some instructions. And Postacoglu a little bit quieter uh, in reflective mood in his uh, technical area. And Aston Villa have won it on the half turn. Ulemans has been Tielemans has been dispossessed. And here goes Le Celso and he pokes it towards the Dogie down the left-hand side. Can Spurs respond immediately? No, they can't. They've had the ball nicked away from them. And then the clearance is far too heavily hit from Kamara because that was a chance to filter it out wide towards Bailey on the left-hand side. I think the thing is, though... Lo Celso's done well, pokes clever. it forward, Son's onside, being played on by Pau Torres, drives it into the penalty area. A little cut back to a dogie, though, is what was required, Bradley. Yeah, he might have been offside, Son, but brilliant nutmeg and through pass from Lo Celso. Advantage was allowed, and maybe Son crossed the fraction early, but Spurs are continuing to go for it. But they're really high, Phil, aren't they? They're, they're yeah. squeezing Villa into their own half of the pitch. There will be counter-attack opportunity for Aston Villa. It's whether they can take it to extend the lead that they've now earned and put themselves in. The well, onus, the responsibility is on Spurs to draw a level now. Well, we saw that high line against Chelsea, didn't we? Uh, as it's been wriggled infield towards Pedro Porro. He just slips it out wide towards this near touchline. But Luka Dean is there to mop it up for Aston Villa. And then Kulisevsky tries to close it down. There was a ball, actually, a first-time pass from Luka Dean, which would have set... Villa in motion, but he went for the more conservative option on that occasion, and Spurs have a chance. Porro, down the right-hand side, steps in field, rolls it back towards Hoiberg. We'll go around a couple of our grounds, I think, in a moment or two. As uh, Here it's chipped out wide towards the Swede. Kulisevsky again brings it under control on the chest, just outside the Villa penalty area, runs into one challenge of, that, of John McGinn, goes into a block challenge with Luka Dean. Uh, he's gone down, Kulisevsky, and Tielemans has it for Aston Villa. Kulisewski is still down inside the Spurs penalty area. Villa continue playing. The referee is not going to stop play. I don't think it's a foul, Phil. I think the Villa player, although the challenge was inside the box... Was it a block challenge, yeah. wasn't it? And it just got, feels got, got to sharp. the ball first. I don't think this is going to be checked. Kulisewski is uh, rather slowly, gingerly picked himself up. Let's have a look. He well, got he, away he, from McGinn, didn't he? And the ball squirmed into the box. Yeah, it's a block challenge. You're yeah. correct. You're right, Phil. Uh, well, the Villa players put the ball out in the end on the far touch line, and just two players. The ball was there. So, oh, they are checking it, you know, Bradley. Possible penalty is what they are now checking. And the referee, Robert Jones, has got his, the arm. No, it's been checked, and it's not going to be a penalty. The throw in will be taken, so. It's going to be given back to uh, Aston Villa, so that check is... Uh, it didn't take long to check that. A uh, bit of drama has been forgotten about on that, uh, that front. Let's see if we can go... Oh, it's now Chatham 5, AFC Wimbledon 4, and that's a full-time scoreline. What a game uh, in the Women's FA Cup second round as Aston Villa have it with their goalkeeper, Martinez, who rolls it out wide to the far touchline. Let's go to Kings Meadow. Uh, Chelsea taking on Leicester in the WSL. Ahmed Noor. 17 minutes to go. Chelsea 4, Leicester 2. Chelsea really should be clearer in front by now. Kerr again with a lovely bit of play getting in behind but forcing a save out of Leipzig. Should have been 5. The cross from Kirby from the left-hand side landed on the head of James but just had to work a bit too hard to get there. They're ringing in the changes but it's still 4-2 Chelsea. 
Thank you very much indeed. Here goes Spurs down the left-hand side. We'll uh, be at Arsenal West Ham in a moment or two. Bailey, a little bit weak with that challenge, actually. It's given Spurs the chance to break forward with Hill again. Rolls it back to Son. Just couldn't get the shot away. Villa, though, not getting the chance to get it clear. And then that's a deflected effort which loops almost towards goal. And it's been palmed away and out of play from Pedro Porro's effort by... Martinez, and that almost came from nothing, Bradley Allen. Yeah, it was Gill on that left-hand side. Son sort of bobbled it around inside the box. Porro's effort into the turf. He lunged to his le uh, right there, Martinez, and he tipped it round the post. He thought it was on target. Spurs corner. Southampton are 2-0 up against Brentford in the Women's FA Cup second round as well. Here comes the corner kick, swept into the six-yard box. Headed over the top of the bar. Great ben chance. Davis. Jumped Ooh. a fraction early, didn't he? The Welsh defender, and it come off the top of his head, couldn't direct it downwards, five yards out, big chance. What an opportunity for Ben Davis for Tottenham Hotspur, couldn't quite convert it. Pretty close though, Bradley, still 2-1 to Aston Villa. Let's go to Emily Herberts watching Arsenal against West Ham United, WSL. No goals this half yet, Arsenal 3, West Ham 0. Russo with the latest chance, heading it down, but goes wide. It's been a few subs, Moritz, Lacasse and Vulti are on for Mead, McCabe and Palova. Arsenal still in control though, just calming down the game in possession in defence. Arsenal 3, West Ham 0. Oh, Tielemans through to, uh, towards Watkins, edge of the area, out comes Vicario, did really, really well, had to make sure, because that was potentially... Not just a free kick, but something even worse for Vicario. Got it away from Watkins. Here is Kamara, though, for Aston Villa. Lead T1. Oh, he's been clipped by Hoiberg. That could well be a yellow card for Hoiberg. I think the referee's going to be sympathetic to say that he was trying to play the ball. Kamara caught. Free kick, what, 25 yards out for Bradley Allen? Yeah, great skill. Just shuffled, manoeuvred the ball very quickly between the two Spurs players. With the uh, left foot of Bailey... McGinn's just walked away from this one. Yeah. I think Villa will fancy their chances, regardless of where the sport, uh, Spurs will eventually lines up here to uh, put Vicario under a bit of pressure. Uh, Luca Dean and Douglas Luiz are stood behind this, having a conversation. Uh, Luca Dean with the left boot. Douglas Luiz, we know he can deliver. Again, the rather obvious set-piece coach of Aston Villa. Austin McPhee out there, gesticulating, waving, puts his hands in his tracksuit pockets. He's a bit of a set-piece guru, isn't he, on that sidelines? That's why they use him, but it's uh, two players now behind this, Douglas Luis or Luca Dean. There is a Aston Villa wall in front of the Spurs wall. 69 and a half minutes gone. Villa leading 2-1 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Stepping back is Douglas Luiz. Luca Dean there as well. Who's going to take it? It will be Luca Dean who's going to clip it and it's palmed away by Vicario. Nice one for the cameras, that really. Didn't have any pace on it. The goalkeeper makes a decent save. Yeah, took no chances. Bit of a Superman save, wasn't it? Away to his left hand side there, Vicario. I think he was going wide of the post. But the Villa fans in good number over the left corner, lower tier to the ground. Acknowledge Dina here as he in swings this corner. 20 minutes to go, plus added time. Luca Dean will place it down. The 30-year-old now, fifth, um, 18th start of the season for Aston Villa. Puts his hand up in the air, left-footed, yellow-booted. In swinger then from the former Everton man into the six-yard box. Watkins again, heads it wide. Oh, Phil, that is so close. Jumped early. The trajectory and the delivery there, the in-swinger from Dean was brilliant. Oh, Lee Watkins, glancing header. Big moment, that. Round of applause as Spurs make a change. Brian Hill is going to be replaced by Oliver Skip. Um, Oliver Skip coming on, and we'll go and find out how it's going on in the FA Cup. It's Billericay against uh, Dulwich Hamlet women. Dave Victor. It's still one apiece, but uh, Hamlet came so close to going back in front. It was Roberts who was brought down on the edge of the penalty area. The resulting free kick came out to Brown. Her header saved by Hope Smith. Billericay Town won. Dulwich Hamlet won. 
John McGinn has won it for Aston Villa. We're now on transition, going to try and play forward. It's Bailey inside the penalty area for uh, Aston Villa. Bailey shot smuggled away, only as far as Tielemans. He's got McGinn to his left, manages to wriggle clear of Lacelso, makes a good block in the end. Spurs playing around with it, and they're going to cede possession back this time to Villa again. Bailey down the right-hand side, touches it infield to Tielemans. He's got Bailey on that far flank. Spurs can't quite get it clear at the moment. Bradley just resettling with Oliver Skip, settling into a central midfield position. So is that a slight tweak with the tactics and the formation? Well, Johnson's gone over onto that left-hand side now to replace Gill. Skip to help out Hoiberg and Lacelso in a more central position. But it's a better spell from Aston Villa, as we yeah. predicted, as we expected in this second half. Luis Kamara started to get a grip in that central area, passing the ball, and then it's feeding the attacking players in promising position. Seelemans out wide to the other half-time substitute, Bailey, down that right-hand side again for Aston Villa. Halfway inside the Spurs half, darkening skies in North London. Seelemans picks up, and then Kamara tries to just make a break beyond that Spurs line, but uh, Bailey's ball forward to him, can't be found by him, and then Son has drifted out wide towards the left-hand side, closed down by Diego Costa, and then it's a ball in towards Brennan Johnson, it's saved brilliantly by Martinez. Kuliseski still has it for Spurs, can he create a shot? Now it's going to be Hoiberg, and just tipped wide by Martinez, diving towards his left. Brennan Johnson with a real opportunity, blocked by Martinez, and then the second opportunity for Hoiberg, tipped away by the former Arsenal goalkeeper. Well, he started the attack there, Hoiberg, and he followed it up. The through ball from Son, Johnson's shot, saved by Martinez, back out to Hoiberg, curling effort, brilliant save from the Argentinian goalkeeper. Pedro Porro takes the corner, puts his left hand up, he drives... Oh, dear. It's poor from Pedro Porro and it's allowed Aston Villa to break and it's Bailey on the halfway line who checks first infield then outfield he's got a doggy for company manages to wriggle it with a bit, a bit of a back heel to Luca Dean if he'd been a little bit more ambitious with a pass he could have set two players free down the right hand side McGinn now does send Esri Konza on the halfway line into Spurs territory closed down by Brennan Johnson Konza pokes it back to Kamara 2-1 Villa lead 73 minutes gone BBC Radio London Sport on DAB Digital Radio, Clara Hermit on 94.9 FM, and there's uh, Luca Dinius spun out wide to him by the Scotsman McGinn down that left-hand side, he's kept it in, filtered into Watkins inside the penalty area, back to goal, first touch lets him down, and Spurs can break with Kulisevsky, full of running, lots of energy, Douglas Weiss trying to power back at him, tries to balk against him, doesn't do so, here's Kulisevsky inside the penalty area, Kulisevsky, it's patted down by Martinez. Oh, what a goal that would have been. Just 1v1 brilliance, ball carrying 60-odd yards. Kulaseski having been released by sub-skip, bounced off Louise, but just his shot, it was straight at the keeper in the end. Well, the Spurs fans feel that Emi Martinez is taking too long to get rid of it. He bowls it over on to this near touchline on Luca Dean, who uh, is caught by uh, Kulaseski, goes to ground. The ball is still in play, and then that's come off Pedro Porro for an Aston Villa throw in. And Luca Dean has a little bit of a toing and froing with uh, Dejan Kulusevski, former Lille and PSG and Roma, an Arsenal player. Yeah, encroachment there from. So the throw is gone Dean to his way. He's flipped it round there, the ref. They know Villa, don't they, Phil? I think if they secure the ball for two or three passes and with the space available for them to break into, yeah. especially with Bailey now, the sub, fresh legs out on that right-hand side, there'll be further goal scoring opportunities for themselves and Watkins as well running that line. Spurs are going to have to work really hard to create Johnson Davis. down that left. Clips it down the left-hand side. Brennan Johnson receiving from Davis. Manages to wriggle in field. He's got Esri Konza for company. Now a doggy behind him for some support. Finding Lo Celso. Into midfield it goes for Hoiberg, who delivers it with a bit of drive and swerve over to the right-hand side. And Kulisevsky closed down by Luka Dean. Tries to spin one way, then the other. Does the Swede. Makes... Uh, Room in field, Dean is able to poke it clear and then Aston Villa just give it a mighty thump towards the halfway line. Up scrambled the fence in the end uh, to get it clear for Aston Villa and the Spurs fans get some encouragement. Uh, we've got, what, 14 and a bit minutes to go plus added on time. Here is Lacelso down the left-hand side, finding a doggy, bottles it out to the path of Brennan Johnson. A doggy goes for the return, clips in across. No one inside the six-yard box really apart from Son and that was a problem and it allows... 
Aston Villa just to chest it back in the shape yeah, of Yeah, Johnson Pau and Ndogi did well on Spurs left. And the cross was sort of teed up towards the far post and just skip and Kuliseski possibly were on their heels slightly and weren't anticipating that. Wolverhampton Wanderers are the only non-London team not to have uh, been beaten here. To uh, Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, Aston Villa, of course, trying to defend this lead they have. Oliver Skip sent forward, but it was always a little bit too heavily hit. And he slid off down the camber of the pitch and towards the south stand, blocked by the advertising hoardings, and Aston Villa have a goal kick, and now they take a little bit of time over this. And the, uh, shall we say, professionalism of seeing the clock tick down is what Martinez is doing. He places Phil, the ball precisely in the six-yard box. You call that a World Cup winner? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he will now march forward. And it is a flicked header by Watkins into uh, the centre circle. Here is Emerson Royale. I'm comfortable with his pass back to his goalkeeper, Vicario, but he controls it pretty successfully. Under no real pressure, the, the Italian arrived in the summer, has impressed many with his performances so far this season. Spurs trailing by two goals to one, looking to avoid a third straight defeat. Now Tottenham Hotspur, as this will be... Konza on the right hand side back heels it came off Konza last though and out of play it bobbles February 2021 last time Spurs lost three on the bounce um, and they're trying to avoid that having lost at home to Chelsea and away at Wolverhampton Wanderers Pedro Porro trying to do something about it goes back to Emerson Royale he's halfway inside the Villa half of the pitch now filters it forward towards Skip Kuliseski's on the right hand side Skip goes for a little run beyond it back it comes to Emerson Royale and Postacoglu, hands plunged into his coat pockets as La Celso delivers out wide towards Brennan Johnson. Left-hand side of the Aston Villa penalty area, shuffles it back infield. Here is La Celso again from Hoiberg. He's crowded out somewhat, and Brennan Johnson's got free, drives it into the six-yard box, and Aston Villa has scraped it clear, and now here comes Tielemans, and he's got a man to aim for towards the left. Instead, he comes into centre midfield, and Douglas Luiz, he bundles it towards Ollie Watkins. Bailey's on that right-hand side. Watkins is going to steer it in towards McGinn now for Aston Villa, who've been sucking up at quite a bit of pressure. Here's Kamara, Bailey to his right, thought about shooting. Shooting. Bailey doesn't make much of a move, now he does, inside the 18-yard box. Spurs back in numbers. Bailey tries to tread on the ball, rolls it back to Tielemans. Aston Villa being patient with their play. Here is uh, swept forward and chipped up into the air, and it's back heeled away, and Spurs will try and deal with it, and they've brought it under control through Brennan Johnson, and La is going to carry the fight forward. But he runs straight into Esri Konza, who shuffles it out of play for a throw into Tottenham on that left-hand touchline. Well, I think the thing is, Phil, is, you know, have Spurs got the go here in Watkins these remaining 15 the top minutes? After Spurs had possession taken away from him, Watkins spills it back to Bailey, who hits a shot. This is blocked by Oliver, skips back. Now Spurs over the halfway line. Oh, Brennan what a Johnson pass. Down the left-hand side, Son getting forward. Tracked across eventually by Diego Carlos. Still with it, Brennan Johnson inside the penalty area. Little step over, and then he rattles a shot over the top of the bar. Still 2 1 uh, Villa lead. Almost 10 minutes, just over 10 minutes to go, Bradley Allen. Yeah. Some tired players, Phil. They are starting to. Johnson, blow Son, Kuliseski. They've pushed and pushed and pushed across this game. Especially with how brilliant they were in the first half. Didn't really take those half and really good chances. Carlos is down, maybe requiring a little bit of treatment. Yeah. I just wonder. Sao Paulo, born 30-year-old, slowly getting to his feet. Is it time, Phil, for young academy striker Jamie Donnelly, maybe, Possibly. to get a debut? Maybe, maybe. Something different, something fresh, someone enthusiastic. Brentford have pulled it back to 3-1, trailing at home to Southampton in the Women's FA Cup. Um, Nicky Woods with the uh, goal just before half-time. Watkins with a flicked header into midfield. Tielemans will get there for Aston Villa. Takes it away from the La Celso. He's got Bailey pulling away towards the right-hand side of the penalty area. Just cushioned back by Dogie to his goalkeeper, Vicario. 
Uh, the Villa fans appealed for a back pass, nothing given, but then it's been presented by a doge to uh, Douglas Luiz, and he goes around one player, and Spurs players looking tired, and here is Kamara, hits a shot, palmed away by Vicario. McGinn will try and get there first, does so, just about for Aston Villa. Dinks in a cross, far post, bundled wide! Somehow wide by Ollie Watkins, and well, I think that's great in. defending by Ben Davis to yeah. make it awkward. Enough of a challenge by Davis just to put Watkins off. He's been yellow carded. The stand up cross from McGinn was fantastic. You think Watkins with his prowess, how he jumps well, and attacks the ball. He was half a yard out. I, the think, I think Watkins thought that came off Ben Davis last, which is why he thought it should have been a corner kick. And that's what he's got being booked for, for pushing the ball away. He may have an argument that it came off Ben Davis's the back of his head as he headed it forward. That's the argument yeah, he's he made. Yeah, he could be the right. Ref the referee's having none of it. He's uh, booked the Aston Villa second goal score. It's been given away, is it, by Spurs? Well, oh, they just got it clear, didn't they? Under a little bit of duress. Kamara couldn't get on the end of it, and here comes Spurs again, down the left-hand side, looking to delve deep into those reserves of energy for the attacking... Brennan Johnson, a dogie, back towards Johnson. Villa have made the block, it balloons out of play in front of the south stand for a corner kick to Tottenham Hotspur. Trailing by two goals to one with eight minutes to go. We'll go to Chelsea against Leicester in a minute for news of another goal in the WSL. We'll stay with this corner meantime, though, for Tottenham Hotspur over on that left-hand side. Son will take it, it's going to be swept in. And there's a Villa player has fallen over. John McGinn suggesting he was shoved. Referee blew the whistle. It's going to have to be taken again, Bradley Allen. Seven and a half to go, plus added time. Postacoglu still waiting at the edge of his technical area. Here comes the corner kick from Spurs by uh, Porro. Martinez is right underneath that. And again, as you'd imagine, gathers the ball, falls to his uh, face on the ground. Well, substitutes warming up away to his uh, left-hand side. Yeah. Martinez using, eking out all his experience here on these restarts. Villa will still feel to seal it, they can get a third. Porro's underneath this for Tottenham Hotspur, brings it under control, finds Hoiberg. Villa not gambling. They lead by two goals to one. They've only won two of uh, their away games so far this season, three defeats and one draw. Draw it against Wolverhampton Wanderers, one apiece, beaten by Nottingham Forest on their travels, for example. Uh, as here they go, to Spurs down the right-hand side, and Kulisevsky keeps it in just in front of the south stand, a couple of yards inside the byline. Oliver Skip is on the point of the penalty area. Skip may be going for the return from Kulisevsky, has it, drives it towards the far post. Caught everyone out, including Brennan Johnson. It sails over his head, but he goes to retrieve. Johnson... Just shifts, shifts it back into midfield, and Ben Davis delivers a cross far post. Kulisevsky just bats it away from him, but he keeps it in from going out of play for a Villa throwing. Closed down by Luca Dean. Back it comes to Hoiberg, level with the edge of the Villa penalty area. 2 1 Aston Villa lead here at Tottenham Hotspurs Stadium against Spurs. Emerson Royale with it, finding Davis. He's going to ping it towards the left and looking for Brennan Johnson. He clips in across far post. Kulisevsky keeps it in. Look at Dean, doesn't make the tackle. Kulisevsky, a little back heel towards the shot off the post and turned in by Son. But the flag's gone up again. Well, Son Hyun Min again looks to the heavens. They'll check it, Bradley. But the flag went up pretty quickly. Yeah, it was set to Porro. He struck it well. Not sure if Martinez got a touch on it when it struck the woodwork. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Two players in an offside position. Come back to Son. It's a brilliant first time. Reaction, refinish. Great anticipation. And we are going to see a change being made. And we're going to see Velez come on to replace... Giovanni Lo Celso replaced by Alejo Vélez, the Argentinian 20-year-old uh, former Rosario player Bradley, coming off the bench for his fourth appearance this season. How many uh, disallowed goals is that today? Three? Three. How many do we see in that Chelsea game here? Five? 33. Yeah, 33. <laughs> Eight in the last two games have been disallowed. I think it was five, wasn't it? 
There was a lot of as it goes back and Watkins tries to put a bit of pressure uh, on the Tottenham Hotspur back line as McGinn now has it for Aston Villa, who lead by two goals to one. Luis sprays it into Tielemans, who's 20 yards from goal, takes a touch. It's Kamara who picks up possession, thought about the shot, tries to flick it into the penalty area. Dogi is able to chest it back to Vicaria, his goalkeeper, and it will be rolled out forward towards the halfway line. Let's quickly go to Ahmed Nur at Chelsea Leicester in the WSL, Ahmed. Yeah, 93 minutes gone, Chelsea now 5-2 up and off the bench scoring in her first, fifth consecutive game, Aggie Beaver-Jones. Can it recreate the opportunity? Made the, sorry, Paris say, got the cross in, Beaver-Jones had it off the post, Raptures here and they're closing in on three points, 5-2 Chelsea. Look at Dean down the left-hand side, chipped into his path by Douglas Luiz. Here he goes, he's going to try and deliver a cross into the six-yard box. Good one, but well tracked back by Ben Davis and Spurs now have it on this near touchline. Son is beaten to it by uh, Pau Torres and Villa just a little bit too strong, a little bit too powerful there with their challenges. And here is Kamara for Aston Villa. Leon Bailey, Bradley, keeps on making little moves. Yeah. Keeps on late making little runs. If just one of shuttle. his teammates had, fi- had seen him, he was in yeah. just more than once. Sort of checks and brings the defender, Adogi, under the ball and then spins in behind. He knows there's space and he's just waiting on the shoulder of the defender for that release pass. Let's go to uh, Emily Herbert, who's watching uh, Arsenal against West Ham in the WSL. Emily. It is full time at Meadow Park. Arsenal three, West Ham nil. Goals from Manham and two from Bethany, who opened her account not once but twice this afternoon. The composed dominant corner for the Gunners. Chelsea is in sight. Arsenal three, West Ham nil. Thank you very much, Emily. As it's gone back to Emerson Royale, Spurs attacking down the right hand side. Two and a half minutes of normal time to go, trailing by two goals to one. Here's a doggy, just steps away from the rush of Bailey. Aston Villa now. Stepping back onto their 18-yard line, Son finds Hoiberg inside the penalty area. Clipped away by the Villa back line. It'll be kept in by Douglas Luiz, who chips it to McGinn, who flicks oh, it well over played. his shoulder to Douglas Luiz. And here now come Aston Villa towards the halfway line. Tielemans, Bailey's on the right. Tielemans filters it towards Leon Bailey. He's in up against the Dogie. He's got back at him well. Tries to take a shot, finds Tielemans. Here's Douglas Luiz for Aston Villa, chipping it to the right-hand side of the penalty area. And the flag go up against him. Late Leon flag. Bailey is offside. Well, they had numbers. And we're still going to have those end-to-end pitch sequences, Phil, aren't yeah. we? There's going to be a good few injury minutes as well with VAR decisions, substitutes, stoppages in play across the second half and the game. Dave Victor's watching FA Cup action. Um, it's Billy Ricky against Dulwich Hamlet. Dave Victor. And the game looks as if it's going to extra time. It's still one apiece here. Billericke, though, going close with Leanne Bell with a strike which went wide of the target. It's Billericke Town 1, down the Hamlet 1. We've got a minute and ten seconds of normal time to go here. Aston Villa, who, uh, won, who did the double last season against uh, Tottenham Hotspur, including winning here by two goals to nil. One, two, one at home. Are looking for a third successive win against Tottenham Hotspur. Spurs are trying to change that. Kuliseski's been caught and a free kick in a really handy position. Right of centre, about 26 yards from goal. Douglas Luiz has been penalised. wonder if Kuliseski a fancy a shot here, Phil. Or is Porro going to just tease this one? You know, Spurs don't have a load of height. I know Velez is on now, but... Yeah. Their adopted central defenders, Davis, Emerson Royale, pushed up from the back. Oh, Velez is tall. Over six foot, the uh, the 20 year old. And it will be a free kick which either Kulisewski or Poro will take. Son is inside that penalty area as well, begloved. We are about to head into added time, of which there is six minutes, although they said that in the first half, Bradley, and we played about 12, so don't go anywhere. Here it comes, Porro, far post, uh, and it's out of play for a goal kick. Full-time at King's Meadow, Ahmed Nur. Yes, final scores, 5-2 here. Chelsea have convincingly been Leicester in the end. Had to make hard work of it, but thanks to goals from Sam Kerr, Lauren James twice, and a lovely finish from Aggie Beaver-Jones. That's given them the three points and kept them on beating, as more importantly, top of the WSL today. 5-2 the final score. Uh, Jean Duran comes on for Aston Villa to replace McGinn. So John McGinn goes off 
and Jean Moran with the H and the O, the different way round, comes on to replace John McGinn. Uh, and they're also going to uh, bring on Jacob Ramsey as well. And Ollie Watkins is going to be replaced by Jacob Ramsey. So Watkins, who's on a yellow card, is withdrawn from the actions and Ramsey on. We're playing six minutes of added time, but there'll be some added time into the added time because the substitutions are made in added time, Bradley. So I don't know what time the old train is booked for, but <laughs> let's hope you gave yourself some wriggle room. You described that perfectly, Phil. <laughs> it's four o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, the last Sunday in November. Christmas getting closer and closer. Spurs could do with a little bit of Christmas, pre-Christmas cheer, but it's Ramsey who attacks now down the left-hand side. Duran is inside that penalty area, just drifts forward, and then it's Ramsey who runs it over the dead ball line. So it will be a throw in to Tottenham. The big scoreboards around the four corners of this ground declare that we've played 92 minutes virtually. 96 is uh, the target that Villa will look at, but they'll know that it'll probably be a little bit more added as a consequence of substitutions. Here's Davis. Spurs trailing by two goals to one. Can they snatch a draw in this one? Emerson Royale to Pedro Porro on the right-hand side. Late drama has seen them lose in particular, Wolverhampton Wanderers recently, Tottenham Hotspur. Pedro Porro claims that came off Jacob Ramsey. The assistant referee on this near touchline says no. Throw into Villa. They'll take their time yeah. with it, Bradley. Time's clicking. Ticking away, isn't it? A solitary chance, perhaps, for Spurs. Maybe they will from this. Oliver Skips won the ball in midfield. Aston Villa have made these changes and they've got it in their possession and that's another foul and Paul Torres has been penalised up to his feet goes Velez who was caught by Pau Torres and another free kick which this time Son comes to take charge of set piece may be the way in Son has walked away from it again Pedro Porro will take it Villa trying to hold this line on the edge of their own 18 yard box for this free kick 93 minutes gone the big scoreboard saying Spurs 1 Villa 2 Pedro Porro with some movement in front of him, clips it towards the penalty area. That's headed away by Diego Carlos towards the far touch line. It'll be met by Brennan Johnson. He's closed down by Tielemans, who's won the ball temporarily. The players sit on each other. Tielemans penalised, and possession has been given to Spurs with a free kick. Unai Emery can't bear to watch. His set piece coach again. Well, maybe. The edge of the technical from area. this left hand side with a Porro in swinger. Yeah. Just a touch from one of the Spurs players because it's pretty much. Everyone, isn't it? Inside the Aston Villa 18 yard box here, barring Oliver Skip, who's just outside. Vicario is actually inside the centre circle, the Spurs goalie. Do Villa want a bit of treatment here? Yeah, it's uh, Diego Carlos who's down inside the 18 yard box. He's trying to kill the moment a little bit, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Take away a little bit of a uh, little bit of the zing from Spurs, who have Pedro Porro on the ball. Velez. On the penalty spot, Odogi, Kulisewski, Davis, all inside that 18-yard box. Vicario's on the centre spot. Here it comes, headed away by Villa. It's going to drift out of play for a corner kick, which Pedro Porro will go and take. Ripple of applause from the Spurs fans. Fingernails being bitten, lucky rabbit's feet or whatever being rubbed. Here it comes from Porro again, six-yard box. It's towards the far post, it's beyond Son. It's gone out of play for another corner kick. Villa players are livid. They thought it came off a Spurs head. Oh, They're going to have so. to reset it's themselves. It's a brilliant touch. Remember some Royale delivery. Porro flicked across, flashed across the Aston Villa goal. Son couldn't come in and touch it. Kulisewski now on this near right-hand side. It will be Kulisewski with it in towards the near post. Martinez comes and claims really good claim through a crowd of players. And now he's gone down. <laughs> All right. Do we really think he's hurt, Bradley Allen? No. Let's go to Dave Victor, Billericke against Dulwich Hamlet. Dave. Late heartache for Dulwich Hamlet. It was 
Matty Biggs, who had the pace to open up the visitors' defence in the 89th minute and put Billerwicky in front. It's Billerwicky 2, Dulwich Hamlet 1. That's the score here to Aston Villa as we're into the last minute of added on time, but there will be an extra bit of added on time, you'd imagine. Headed away by Pedro Porra. Douglas Luiz in midfield, nudges it down towards Bailey. Shifts it back to Tielemans. He almost gets caught in possession, does Yuri Tielemans, and he's going to go all the way back to his goalkeeper. Martinez is well out of his goal, uh, as is 18-yard box as he smashes this up the park. Now in midfield, Tielemans again on the chest. He looks for Bailey, uh, and there was a... That's just what Villa wanted, wasn't it? The referee getting in the way. Yeah, well... He, Douglas yeah. uh, Tielemans, Tielemans forward pass. forward, yeah and it will be Villa's ball because they were in possession. So the six minutes of added on time have gone. Bailey tries to peel down the right-hand side. He's offside, Phil. Um, he's not. The flag stayed down. Whether he's being played on by the likes of Ben Davis, he's taken it into the corner, and he's won a throw into Aston Villa. We're playing added time, in added time, and Aston Villa have a throw in on the far yeah, touchline. Yeah, they're deep just getting themselves, seeing themselves over the line. It's been a hard fault victory for them, hasn't it, when... Spurs have played so well in that first 45 and could well prove to be Aston Villa's day with an important away victory for them. Well, leading by two goals to one, Aston Villa. They've taken the throw in. They have possession again on the edge of the Spurs penalty area. Strike a shot, goalwards. It's gone well wide. Uh, and we've played 97 minutes now of this Football match plus the 12 minutes we no, played in the no. first half. That's awful for Emerson Royale, and he's given possession towards John Durant down the left hand side, sweeps it infield. Uh, 97 minutes now have elapsed. Here is Douglas Luis to Duran again. Takes it forward on the left. Pedro Porro tries to bounce into him. He allows the substitute to break to the left. And then Pedro Porro goes in hard. The Aston Villa substitute makes a meal of it. And the referee's given a free kick. And he may blow for full time. No, yes, he has. Aston Villa fans celebrate. Unai Emery's side up to fourth in the table. Spurs suffer their third successive defeat for the first time since February 2021. Perfect start they made. Started really strongly. Took the lead through Lo Celso's deflected shot. But on the stroke at half time, started seeding a little bit of opportunity and chance to Aston Villa, who got an equaliser through a header from Pau Torres. Oli Watkins there, leading scorer. Put them ahead in the second half. Spurs tried, certainly with some set pieces, to get themselves a share of the spoils. But maybe the injuries, the suspensions and the fatigue of having to put so much into that game just took its toll in the end. They couldn't couldn't craft a real clear-cut opportunity in the end to get that equaliser. And Aston Villa clamber above Spurs, who in the last three games now have slipped from top spot to fifth in the table. And just those players missing have been telling somewhat. It's finished here on BBC Radio London. Tottenham Hotspur 1, Aston Villa 2. BBC Radio London. The home of London football. football. Well, a very, very dramatic afternoon here in North London. We will have you back in the capable hands of Clara Hermit in a couple of minutes. So let's just wrap up what we've seen here. And Bradley, I mean, was it that 52nd minute goal from Paul Torres that almost changed this game? Because getting that impetus right at the end of the first half, then being able to bring on those two players of real quality in the, in the figures of Tielemans and, and Leon Bailey, and Spurs just couldn't respond. Great point, Lucy. I think, you know, the... 45 minutes that Spurs had, you know, we played nearly 52 in total in that first half. Spurs were actually brilliant, but perhaps didn't in key moments have the shooting boots on to have a scoreboard, which they deserved on that 57th minute, which could have been 2-3 in front. And then Villa, you know, got the uh, half chance and then they then got the free kick, as you say, which Torres powered in. And the game changed a little bit. But I think what we're now seeing is a, a true reflection of possibly where Spurs are at. Um, he's going to have a tough job over the next few weeks. I would say for eight weeks, and possibly Hodglu, because this squad is really tested now. The losses to players, Lucy, it's been brutal. It's been brutal. It's Spurs' his best players that he doesn't and have. And call going off today just sums it up, Yeah, it? that was, you know, a poor challenge by Matty Cash. Not a red card. Uh, a yellow card was the right decision. But to lose Bentancourt, having just come back after a 10-month layoff, could prove to be just another uh, really um, 
unfortunate and disappointing thing that's gone against Spurs. So Big Ange will know that he's uh, going to have to work hard with his coaching staff to pull the socks up of these players and go again. And it's just a small matter of Man City away next well, week. Yeah, you look at this December run of fixtures. Man City away, West Ham here under the lights on a Thursday night. Newcastle here, Nottingham Forest away. We know how difficult the city ground can be. Hosting Everton, away at Brighton, then Bournemouth here on New Year's Eve. That is a very, very busy December. I know everyone's got a lot of fixtures, but with the squad, when you look at Tottenham's bench, they've got no one. They're relying on kids now. It, yes. It's so difficult. That, that's how stretched it is. And, and actually, I often say, Lucy, when you play a particular opponent, the timing of when you you play them, you, they play Villa here. And Villa, in my opinion, weren't at their best yes. today, but Villa actually are showing what an improving side they are because they've won the football match. Spurs have got to play Everton, who are going to be fighting for their lives with the points <laughs> deduction. Bournemouth, Brighton got a big win yesterday. Manchester City, as I say, next week. Uh, the FA Cup, the third round draw, they'll await that. And, you know, West Ham as well, which is always... You know, a really tough London derby for Spurs on Thursday the 7th. So a lot of games for Spurs to uh, to complete across the busy December period and into the new year. A real test now for them. Yeah, a final word for you in a second, Bradley, but let's just get you to Villa Ricky because it was late, late heartbreak by the sounds of it for the mighty Dulwich Hamlet, Dave Victor. Yes, Hamlet are out of the FA Cup. They failed to take their chances created in the first half. Lily Price denied by the woodwork. Summer, Reed and Sawyer all foiled by excellent first half saves from Hope Smith. The breakthrough came from the spot. Brit Sayon's target after Lily Jones had handled, but Billericke much stronger after the restart. Walsh grabbed the equaliser in the 55th minute, and it was Maddie Briggs who snatched the winner in the 88th minute. Final score here, Billericke Town 2, Dulwich Hamlet 1. Thank you very much, Dave. And just to round up our other featured games, it finished Chelsea 5, Leicester City 2. Chelsea's 20th consecutive home WSL win. They are top of the table, three points ahead of Jonas Eideval's Arsenal. Six wins in a row for them. They beat West Ham 3-0. Worrying times for West Ham, who teeter nervously above the drop zone. I mean, just final word from you two, Phil and Bradley. Obviously, as we say, three defeats in a row now for Spurs. They've got to regroup. Maybe Manchester City galvanising for them that they can go up there. No one will think that Tottenham will win, with all due respect, up at, at City. And we saw it last season where they went up and, and took the early lead up there, I think. And then, yeah, that was a crazy game too. But a big, big one now next Sunday to just even get the mentality back and that feeling of yeah. not being so hard done by in every possible way. Tough place to go. And, and, and you're not going to be able to play necessarily Ange ball because City won't let you, let you do that as much up there. Um, you know, it, it is a very hard run. But I think Ange Postacoglu was temporary. When, when they went 10 games without defeat and they, you know, had that amazing start of 26 points in the opening 10 games, he was still tempering it, saying, look, we've still got work to do. I'm not getting overexcited. That there is work to do in transfer windows because he knows that the depth of the squad that, that he's got um, and that this was possibly going to come. And they were without certain players today. He, he picked the formation that, and, and, a, and a team selection that some people may have gone, wow, that, that looks a bit interesting. But it, they went for Villa. They got ahead. Worryingly, of course, it's the third game where they've lost on the bounce, but they've been ahead in all of those games. They've taken the lead. I just want to yeah. say one thing, though, Brad, said about Villa are they now becoming the real deal they're two points off top of the table yes they've got Europe but they've got a really really accomplished manager in their midst who's maybe got something to prove when it comes to to English football they're a really big club as well Aston Villa and um, are we seeing the renaissance of this this great great side we've talked about Spurs renaissance are we seeing Aston Villa's renaissance under Unai Emery as well because they did what they had to do today and when they had to defend that they were strong they certainly was and and, and that is a sign of progress, that's a sign of uh, a side that are really improving and they're playing really consistent football in all areas. They have a good depth to their squad as well. And that, like you say, they have a very, very um, accomplished manager at the helm. Mm, yeah, so it finishes Tottenham 1, Aston.
Aston Villa 2. More live sport all week, to be honest. But tomorrow night, Aaron Paul's London Sports Show from 6 to 8 p.m. comes live from Craven Cottage ahead of full commentary of Fulham versus Wolverhampton Wanderers in the Premier League. Obviously, reaction to all these games in the uh, sport bulletins tomorrow morning during breakfast with Salma. And, of course, reaction throughout the day to that tragically sad news that the great Terry Venables has passed away at the age of 80. But that is all we've got time for now. We're going to hand you back to Clara Hermit on BBC Radio London 94.9 FM.